running of the Daytona 500. Thank you for our military, our veterans. Lord, we pray that you'll be with the drivers, their families, their pit crew. And Lord, may we commit to you to always be one nation under God, for we are the United States of America. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here to perform the national anthem, please welcome from Fort Bragg, North Carolina, the 82nd Airborne Division All-American Chorus. It's the great American race for a reason, and you're a part of it live on Fox from Daytona International Speedway. We're racing moments away.
coming, bud. You're gonna do it. You're gonna win it. Right with you. You're clear. Check your flag. You win. just <laughs> you come out of your frame when you win that race I don't have enough words really to sort of help someone understand what that feels like you explode really your insides just explode and all this you know emotion comes out you know screaming and shouting and talking I was you know driving down the front straightaway after the race with the checkered flag the fans pressed up against the fence the energy you know and the electricity coming off of that crowd imagine winning the lottery you know 300 million dollars just lands in your lap what would you feel Woo! i can't believe this <laughs> this is better than the first one in this win it was pure joy just pure joy no relief just joy happiness A face and a name that is NASCAR, and appropriately for the first time ever, a pickup is pacing the great American race. This is the all-new Chevy Silverado, and the two-time Daytona 500 champion, Dale Earnhardt Jr., is enjoying. This is an honor. This is like that ceremonial first pitch, but especially for the great American race to be in the pace car. In this case, a pace truck. This isn't your granddaddy's NASCAR. Daytona 500. First career win. It was for seven drivers. Imagine the first time that you win a race, you win this one. This track opened in 1959. They renovated in 2016. The birthplace of speed's been repaved a couple of times. Drivers always talk about that as Lake Boyd was formed when they were digging and building this. Three drivers have actually ended up in the lake. Bethune Cookman, they actually had college football games here four different games a bird's eye view of daytona international speedway kevin harder there's the focus of a past champion of the sport the head nod and a daytona 500 winner three years ago we had the closest finish in history four different leaders in the final four laps two years ago martin truex jr one of those with his new race team joe gibbs toyota one of those past the champions of the sport who've yet to win the Daytona 500. Joey Logano has done it. He's won the 500. He's won the championship coming off a championship year in his Penske Ford. Austin Dillon trying to repeat showed that you can only lead a late lap and still win. Boy, that was special seeing that three car last year in victory lane at the Great American Race. And it's not just a race. It's a happening. It's a scene. It's a party. And we're glad you're with us for the 61st running of the Daytona 500. Here to deliver the most famous words in motorsports for the 61st annual Daytona 500, please welcome our Grand Marshal, three-time NFL Defensive Player of the Year, Houston Texans defensive end, J.J. Watt. Drivers, start your engines! Right, J.J. Watt said he would deliver, and he did, for the drivers to crank it up and roll another season here. NASCAR on Fox, another Daytona 500, and to take you through it, Darrell Waltrip, Jeff Gordon, and Mike Joy. Gentlemen, start your talking. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Chris, for all the fun we've had and for your unique perspective on the sport. 61st running of the Great American Race, a tradition of finishes too close to call. It's been an interesting speed week. We've had crashes and we've had some follow the leader, but if drivers are reluctant to pass, maybe, Darrell, it's because of what happened last Sunday here in the class. Yeah, what makes restrictor plate racing so interesting and so much fun to watch is how much we run in a pack. But if anything goes wrong, here's the result. Here's what happens. 17 car pileup. Big pileup. Big mess. But there's a way to do it right. Yeah, and then we watched Joey Logano in his qualifying race. Now, Joey had it figured out. He'd been thinking about this move for several laps. But what you want to do is get a run on the car in front of you. You see here, Joey drops the inside of the 10 car. Gets a little side draft right there. Now he's going to shoot to the bottom of the racetrack. He's got the 12, his teammate behind him, giving him a shove. 
and that's able that, it, that propels him out in front of the 14 car and on to victory lane he went that's and that's doing do it, it that's right the right way and everybody's been going to school on that move we have the youngest front row for any daytona 500 in its 61 year history and right behind them 29 starts and two victories two very experienced veterans jeff yeah, Mike, I mean, in order to execute the perfect Daytona 500, it takes preparation, it takes skill, some good old-fashioned luck, and experience goes a long way. Well, let's look at that front row. There's only three starts between these two young kids and the previous Daytona 500s. You go to those two rows behind them, 47 starts among them, a lot of experience. I look for these veterans to pounce and take these young kids to school early on in this Daytona 500. But watch out, veterans. They're pretty good students. Be careful what you teach them. They might just show you why they were the best in their class. Look at that grandstand packed house. 101,000 fans in the seats from 45 countries ready for the great American race. You and we have waited all winter for this. It's the biggest race we have all year long. The icons of this sport have all starred on its biggest stage. It's the great American race. Trust me. Oh, I won the Daytona 500. I won the Daytona 500. In Daytona. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, no, man. Today, Daytona Beach, Florida goes from the 37th most populous city in the state of Florida to 12th. With 101,000 fans in the stands, a full infield, the suites are packed. We and these race teams are ready to go. One, two, three, three. Win on three. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, three. Youngest front rows in history, 1999, 2002, average age 26. Drop it down another number, 21-year-old William Byron and 25-year-old Alex Bowman. 
will start from the front row, the youngest front row in history. Each driver looking for their first Daytona 500. Alex Bowman was on pole here last year. They're both in Chevrolets, but behind them come the fast Fords. Kevin Harvick, the 2007 winner. Joey Logano won in 2015, and he's the series champion. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. won here in July 2017. And Clint Boyer looking for his first Daytona Triumph. Paul in that, uh, Mike had po Paul Menard in that potent 21 car. He could become the sixth different driver to win the 500 for the Wood Bros. And Eric Amarola, remember, he was leading this race when he came to the white flag last year. Got Matt DiBenedetto. That's a new team. I expect great things out of him. Denny Hamlin, he has the closest margin of victory ever. Martin Truex Jr., he's new to the Gibbs team, but not new to winning. And then you got Kurt Busch, new to the to the uh, Ganassi team, but he could be a factor. The DW, let's go to row seven. Last year's impressive runner-up finish in the Daytona 500, Bubba Wallace, outside of him, led the most lap in last year's 500, Ryan Blaney. On to row eight. Finished in the top five in both Daytona races last year, Chris Buescher, and outside of him, in his last cup start, 2010 Daytona 500 winner, Jamie McMurray. Row nine. The Hendrick duo, two-time Daytona 500 winner Jimmy Johnson. Chase Elliott looking for his first so close run out of fuel. Two to go, 2017's Daytona 500. Row 10, Ryan Newman, don't count this guy out. 2008 Daytona 500 winner. And alongside him, defending Daytona 500 winner Austin Dillon. 40 cars to start the Daytona 500 as you look through the second half of the starting field. Well, butterflies, let's see if we can hear them from our pole sitter. <laughs> William Byron, this is Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? Yeah, it's before I got you, Jeff. Well, buddy, you're leading the Daytona 500 to green here. Tell us, I mean, what's this week been like? What's, what was it like waking up this morning, know, uh, this morning knowing you're going to lead this field to green? Well, it's an awesome feeling. Um, got a great race team, obviously, to make this happen. And, We've had a smooth week, so we got goals to accomplish today, things we want to check off, and uh, got to get to the end of this race. So, got a fast race car to do it with. Well, you got a lot of veterans there behind you. I'm just wondering, what's a young guy like you got for these uh, veterans? How are you going to show them that the young guy can get it done today? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little different last year, but this year I don't, don't really care what they think, so I'm going to do what it takes for us to win and see what happens. Well, that's awesome. We look forward to it. Have a great one. Ready to race here in Daytona, but first, let's look back at the growing legacy of Toyota and what's next with the Toyota Rev Up to Green. From their first signature Cup Series win in 2008 to celebrating not one but two Cup championships with Kyle Busch and Martin Truex Jr. and capturing the Great American Race in 2016, Toyota has made its mark on our sport. But what's beyond the next turn might be the biggest moment yet. Let's see what 2019 has in store. Toyota, let's go places. Time for late breaking stories from Pit Road and our all-star cast of reporters. Beginning, uh, we'll take the square in the lower left corner, Matt Yoakum. <laughs> Mike, the captain, Roger Penske has two wins in the Daytona 500 with two different drivers. Ryan Blaney would love to make it a third. He's always raced like an old soul, led 118 laps last year, had the best car until the crash. But he's learned a lot. He hopes to capitalize on those lessons with his first win in the 500. Regan Smith. Well, Matt, Jimmy Johnson, for the first time in 17 years, has a new crew chief on the pit box and a new sponsor on the race car. So far, so good. He won the clash last week and has had a fast race car all this week. He told me as he was getting in the car, they built some extra downforce into this race car for today's race, anticipating these temperatures. Look for him to be strong as he tries to get his third Daytona 500 victory. Vince? Two years ago, Kyle Larson had the lead on the final lap of the Daytona 500 and ran out of gas. If he's to win today, he's going to have to overcome another bad break. When his team arrived at the track today, they found oil under the car. They had to change the transmission. That means Larson will start from the tail. He says the key is not losing that lead group early in the race. Worst to first, an even more difficult proposition for Kyle Larson today. Jamie? Well, Kyle Busch has won about everything there is to win in racing except the Daytona 500. He wants this one so bad, in fact, 
that back home at his Kyle Busch Motorsports, he has a giant trophy case. Well, right in the middle, there's an open gap. It's waiting for this trophy, the Daytona 500. Kyle's been involved in a couple of issues already this week. He qualified in the back, but as always, you can never count the 18 out. Larry Matt. Yeah, Jamie, drivers and their spotters will be formulating strategy all day long, but a lot can fall in that crew chief's lap. We know the importance of staying up front. He's already thinking about that final trip to pit road to get his driver at the front of the drafting pack. Now let's take a look at our race analysis for today. We're going to go 200 laps, 500 miles. The stages will be 60, 60, and 80 laps of the checkered. Pit road speed, 55 miles per hour. And Mike, look at that fuel window, 45 to 48 laps. Really important. Thanks, Larry. Three drivers will go to the rear. Casey Mears, Jamie McMurray, and the aforementioned Kyle Larson will start out back. The pace truck is running highway speed, 65 miles an hour. That's the slowest they will be all day. 1,600 feet to the start line as Dale Earnhardt Jr., two-time winner of the 500, is going to make that hard left turn. And, Mike, uh, what I look, look, 100,000 people on their feet anticipating the start of this race. Green flags in the air. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing at Daytona, boys. Speeds building toward 200 miles per hour. Pole sitter Byron got an edge, slipped up in front of his teammate Alex Bowman, and two Chevrolets will lead them to complete lap one. Yeah, Mike, Mike it, right now is when you know, after a couple of laps, two or three laps, tire pressure build up a little bit, you'll know what kind of car you got and what kind of shape you're in for this race. I was waiting to see that green flag and see how coordinated these teammates were. We saw William Byron do a great job getting in front of his teammate Alex Bowman on that outside lane, which, been, which has been preferred this week, as well as those Ford teammates, except for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. getting left out to form that outside lane. But I'm impressed with this inside lane, how it's holding on. Oh, I think this inside lane will work good today. I think they'll be up there. William Byron led 12 laps here in the July race. Two Chevys in front of those three Fords with the pointers in. And Ricky Stenhouse trying to make it happen on the inside. He's got Matt Benedetto right behind him in a Toyota. and. Martin Truex, new to the number 19, right behind him in another Toyota. And remember, that 17 car has been bad fast. Talladega and here, restrictor plate racing. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has been pretty darn good here. And you know what he's saying right now, Mike? Boogity, 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 here I come. Now, Mike, all week long, we've seen where the outside lane has been the best lane to get into. And Brad Keselowski in our pre-race told us, I don't think that's going to be the case today. So far, he was absolutely right. I think the weather conditions is hot and slick. That upper groove, they've been running up there a lot. A lot of rubber up there. Try that bottom, shortest way around. Might just work. Stenhouse is looking pretty good. Stenhouse side drafting off Byron. And will a Ford come by to lead lap three? Yes, Ricky Stenhouse takes the lead even if only for a couple of seconds. But look who's right behind him, De Benedetto. I I'm really impressed with the job that Matt De Benedetto has been doing in this 95 car. He's a sleeper. Now, there was a, a strategic move right there. William Byron had been running up against the wall, thinking that that was going to be what was going to separate him from that inside lane. He saw Ricky Stanhouse leading that inside lane on the bottom. He went down and side draft him through the corner. Which is the faster lane? Denny Hamlin says the one with the most cars in it. Well, but right now, they both <laughs> have it's about a, it's the a tie. same. <laughs> it would be a tie right now. I would say right now it's going to be the ones that are the most aggressive. And we just saw a nice push from Matt Benedetto to try to push Ricky Stenhouse Jr. out to the lead. The guy that's making, uh, the guy that's really putting a push hard on his 22 car here, Joey Logano, he was really all over the back of that 80. Alex Bowman getting shuffled out of the draft already. Sucker ho. Ah, he got down from his teammate, Jimmy Johnson, cut him some slack. But look at the gap that's opened up to the front of the field. That will fill in as these cars break a 200 mile an hour hole in that wall of wind. 
Kyle of Branch, Mississippi dirt track racer, has become a super speedway ace. Ricky Stenhouse. Boy, he is so good at these types of tracks. And Mike, right now, I think these guys are probably a little bit confused. I'm, I'm thinking about William Byron. This man, that outside line has been the way to go. But I just got passed on the inside by the whole inside line. What's going on? Regan Smith. Well, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. told me this morning, this is the best Daytona 500 car he has ever had, even better than last year's car. But the biggest difference, he said he knows what to do with the car this year and where he wants to put it on the racetrack. So far, that's pretty evident as he's up front leading the pack. He was on the inside, Jeff, drifted up high. Now he's back down low. Why? Well, what happened with Alex Bowman was he was following his teammate, trying to side draft through the tri-oval. And boy, just a, a great job by Joey Logano just getting outside of his uh, right side. I don't think Alex Bowman really thought that anybody was going to be that aggressive to the outside this early in the race, but uh, they caught him. One nice surprise. Matt DiBenedetto going for the lead <laughs> at Daytona. He switched teams this year, moved up to Levine Family Racing. He said, we're going places. He's going to the lead, Vince. Unbelievable, Mike. Two weeks ago, this race car didn't even have all the parts and pieces to run. They couldn't even start the car. They didn't have enough pieces. This team has been a rebuild since last season. New driver, new crew chief, different spotter combination, and everything has been done from scratch. And right now, it's paying off. He's leading the Daytona 500. Mike Wheeler, who won the Daytona 500 with Denny Hamlin in 2016, is the new crew chief there. First time Matt DiBenedetto has led a, lead, led a lap in the 500. And Mike, it doesn't surprise me too much that some of the more experienced drivers like you see Kevin Harvick there, maybe even Joy Logano, that these young kids have their time in, that these in the sun, let them lead a little bit. It's a long way to the end. Now how about third place Martin Truex in the 19, Matt? Mike, this is the warmest day of Speed Weeks right before the car pulled off the grid. Truex tipped his helmet forward and his cooling hose that goes into the helmet pulled out. It was too short. They quickly fixed it by, by lengthening that, giving him just enough clearance so that way he wouldn't have an issue. Dodged a bullet early. Need some more clearance, Clarence. <laughs> two by two, here they come. Keep an eye on Joey Logano. We saw him make that move on Alex Bowman a few laps ago. He almost made the same move through the trioval on William Byron. He is not content with being in that third row right now. Guys, I am not surprised to see two by two by two because if you go back to the dual races on Thursday night and the clash, we were all concerned. They're single file. That was 20 car fields. This is a 40 car field. I think we're going to see a lot of this throughout the day. Yeah, Larry, I think you're right. There's 20 on the inside and 20 on the outside. So, uh, yeah, I think the weather has a lot to do with it. And I think these guys have been studying these races they ran, and I think the weather has made a big difference in the day. And I think that inside is the way to go right now. May not be later, but it is right now. Riding along with Chase Elliott here, pretty far in the back. I really think, you know, 26th place, that tells me after some of the moves we saw him trying to make in the duel, he's thinking 500 miles. I need to get there. It's not about getting to the front right now. And, and listen, when I say he drives a lot like his dad, his dad was the same way. Bill Elliott wouldn't take any chances, wouldn't put his car in harm's way and let it sort itself out and be there at the end. That's a Chase Elliott kind of race. Toyota 1-2 on the inside, Ford Chevrolet on the outside, and as we come to lap 11, the Joe Gibbs teams will come to the top of the pit wall in salute of J.D. Gibbs, Joe Gibbs' eldest son, who recently passed from a longtime neurological disease. He was the co-founder of Joe Gibbs Racing, president of the company, a racer himself, and a former college and high school football player who wore number 11. So on lap 11, we salute him and his legacy. Coach Gibbs continues on, but J.D. Gibbs smile and warmth still felt throughout this entire garage area, and he is someone we really miss. Really true, he's a member of the board of directors, MRO, great guy, look at Coach, oh my gosh. Saying a little prayer, I'm sure. One of those Toyotas that has an alliance with Joe Gibbs Racing is out front.
As they came through the triangle, Joey Logano went high, and that put pole sitter William Byron in the middle. Stuck, no help, and Alex Bowman, his teammate, will let him in on the low line. It's just a matter of time. I mean, those two guys, uh, we talked about it opening up the show. They're young, and they just have so much experience, veterans, and those strong forwards behind them that want to shuffle them out. You can see he's doing everything he can. He's right on the rear bumper. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. trying to give him a nice push. But as he got close to his rear bumper, it just allowed Joey Logano to get a nice run and peek to the outside. Mike, you know why we call it the sucker hole? Because it sucks you right to the rear. When you get in that middle lane like that, no friends. No friends. Well, now it's the low line. Uh, Larry Mack, are they intending to pit, or is that just the current fast route? Well, Mike, I do believe that we may see some drivers hit pit road. Remember the fuel window about 46 to 48 laps. This this first stage is the exact same length as the dual race, 60 laps. So you pit now, you can go to the end of stage number one. I would not be a bit surprised over the next few laps to see some drivers hitting pit road. Here they come, Larry. A lot of those fast forwards come to pit road. Regan. Well, Kevin Harvick spots the 40th pit stall. First stall in. Rodney Childress says he likes that stall. It's going to be gas only for Kevin Harvick. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. hits his pit stall. They wanted to pit a couple laps ago, but he couldn't get in off the bottom. Matt. Joey Logano eases into his box. They're going to just top him off with fuel. The gas man, Chris Conklin, connected. Todd Gordon says, you are gone. Kyle Larson was one driver I saw that took tires, but most were gas only. And he was the only Chevrolet that pitted with all those Fords. I was going to say, you, did you notice anything about the group that came in? They were oh, Denny Fords. Hamlin loose off a of turn four. Just saved it there. I don't know if he was trying to come to pit road, possibly. He might have had little, a little help I was there. Say, he might have got a little bump. I have to go back and look at it, but could have. Now, something else I'm noticing up in the front here, another Ford that did not make it to pit road. I don't know if he was caught in the outside, and that's uh, Suarez. Here's a shot. Oh, I see Denny Hamlin's three wide in the middle. Oops. Oh, just so close. Down he came. Cody Ware was there. Cody Ware, yes. Kurt Busch has a new ride. The car in his mirror, the 41, he drove last year. Now he's at Chip Ganassi Racing. Taking yep. over the number one from Jamie McMurray. All three guys winning one, two, three. Of course, getting ready to come to pit road, but all in new different cars this year, new teams. Riding with Ryan Priest and our Fox Visor cam. Regan? Well, Kurt Busch is going to hit the pits in the number one car. It'll be gas only for Kurt Busch, much like all the other cars we've seen so far. Vince? The 41, gas only. The can stuck in the back. But he got it out just in time. Matt Benedetto, Bubba Wallace, Kyle Busch, who started out back in row 16, now up at the front. All right, guys, we're seeing a lot of drivers that are not pitting. I think another strategy would be, as long as we have this big group, would be to split this stage in half, 30 and 30. That way you get fresh tires for splitting the segment up as far as the 30 laps and 30 laps. So that I think that could be the strategy with this big group that stayed out there. Yeah, Larry, if they're this big of a group, if you just take the overall draft of this group and speed, versus those that just came down pit road. They're just going to keep gaining and actually pulling away. Let's have a look at uh, Daniel Suarez pit stop. Little issue here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, didn't take that no. equipment out of the box, out of the pit box, which would have been a penalty. And, oh, oh no. Trouble here. Corey LaJoy. Oh, man. It's not going to be good for his face at all. <laughs> That's going to leave a scar yeah. on the hood of that car of LaJoy. Caution is out. I don't think those guys made it to pit road before pit road was uh, closed. Ryan Priest, Chris Busher, his teammate, Bubba Wallace coming to pit road. Going to have to get a patch on that eye. Along They're with just going to keep Reddick. rolling right on through. Uh, all but Ty Dillon, who stops in the box. And we'll see how that's called. First, hey, caution. Hey, Larry, don't you love strategy right when you think you got it all figured out? Then we have a caution. 
Well, now that this always kind of muddies the water. And Larry, as you know, this, this now just played into all those guys hands that came in because they've already done their stop. They're in good shape. They're going to stay out there and all these cars that hadn't come in yet are going to lose that valuable track position. Yeah, but you know, yes, that's no. the reason you pit. That's the reason you pit early is that you in the perfect world. You hope that happens. Corey LaJoy's team had a lot of fun putting his face on that Mustang. That's going to leave a mark. He just wiped a smile off of that face. While we wait on pit road to open with 21 laps complete here in Daytona. Let's look at today's Ford performance track facts. Tiny Lund was the first Ford to win the Daytona 500. He won it for the Wood Brothers in 1963. The most recent Ford winner is Kurt Busch in 2017. Ford has 15 victories in the Daytona 500 and a new suit of clothes this year. The Mustang body on all these NASCAR. Cup Series Fords. In 1963, Tiny Lund driving in relief for Marvin Panch. Marvin was in a practice accident in a Ferrari, I think it was. The Wood Brothers ran 500 miles. I think the race may have been called a little short, but they ran the whole race and never changed tires. The world's greatest pit crew, all they did was gas and go. So one caution for Corey LaJoy here with 22 laps complete. Boy, what a contrast to last year's Daytona 500 with the pileups coming early and often. Wow. Huge. Yeah, and Mike, I think this is why there's a little bit more spoiler back there. Here's the last lap going into turn three. Austin Dillon getting in the back of 10 Almirola. Just heartache for that team. Pits will be open this time, and Daryl, as I recall that story, uh, Marvin Panch ran to the aid of that burning car along with Ernie Gahan and four others, pulled the driver out to safety, eventually received the Carnegie Medal of Freedom, and you're right, from his hospital bed, he asked Glenn Wood to put Tiny Lund in the car. The Wood brothers did, and Lund won the 500. Won that race. Uh, somebody asked you guys real quick, Larry. The other guys didn't change tires. They just put gas in. These guys are going to have an opportunity to put four fresh tires on. Would that be an advantage here for these cats? I think as many guys that will be up front, track position still going to be king. Pit Road's a busy place, Vince. Well, that lead car, the 95 of Matt De Benedetto, led 15 laps, had hoped to have pitted earlier, but uh, wasn't in position to get down and get on pit lane when they wanted to pit. Cars fine, no issues, gas and four tires, Jamie. Kyle Busch in the 18 said he needs more grip so he can get those tires to last a little longer. He wasn't sure if he wanted an adjustment, but it's four tires, Matt. James Riddle has already made the chassis adjustment. William Byron said the car too tight when he runs the bottom, but it's also way too free up top. The weather certainly being a factor early on. Here's your Sunoco race off pit road. Casey Mears, who's not been in a cup car in two years, Jermaine Racing called, said, would you come run the Daytona 500 for us? We're going to have a second car. He did. He's in the lead.
The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by the Ford F-150. It doesn't just raise the bar, it is the bar. And by KFC, you can get any two Chicken Littles for $3. 23 laps complete at Daytona. You need a special dispensation to fly a drone at a major sporting event anywhere in the United States. We've got it. That's our Fox Sports drone bringing you some great pictures as the pace truck hits pit road once again. And we get ready to go back to green. Corey LaJoy, Ty Dillon, Daniel Hemrick penalized for pitting too soon before pit road was open. Uncontrolled tire for B.J. McLeod and a speeding penalty on pit road for Michael McDowell on that caution, but now back under green with Ricky Stenhouse out front. Ryan Blaney in the 12 way up top. Yeah, I got the six of uh, Ryan Newman behind him getting a good shove here. 42 Kyle Larson, there's a 24 of Byron. The 95 of Benedetto trying to make that outside go somewhere, but no luck. I'm so curious to see the reset. Now that these drivers have had a chance to feel their cars out, see which lane is working best, I think you're going to see a lot of these guys, especially because there's a bunch of Fords lined up on the bottom, just run right around that yellow line for a while. Here's Bubba Wallace going three wide through the middle. That's a great way to get to the front. Or not. <laughs> well, if your car is handling good. <laughs> or not. It, it's a good way to get there if you make it. Daniel Suarez got left alone way on the high side in that red 41. But again, I go back. I go back to when he did not pit with all of his teammates. There were a bunch of other Fords that came. I, he didn't come with them, and it's sort of gotten him out of sequence and out of touch with those guys. Denny Hamlin making a power move to the outside. David Reagan stuck in the middle in the 38. Jamie? Alex Bowman in the 88 after he came in for his stop and took four tires. He was having radio issues while the team looked through binoculars. His spotter Kevin Hamlin noticed that the antenna on the roof of the car was bent backwards. So they've been switching radios. They've been switching from one radio station to the next to see if they can fix it without pitting. Right now he can hear but there's still a little bit of static. Squeeze play at turn two. Three wide, four rows deep. Well, especially right now and throughout this Daytona 500, you're going to want to hear your spotter crystal clear. Together in front of us, I'm going to get back to him. Middle three, half lane between the 24s. Is Still middle three, bottom is clear behind that 48. 95 is going to try to drop. Still three, still three. One in front when you get there. One in front, half, still top of three. David Reagan, Kyle still Larson in back, the middle. 24, 43, still top. One and a half back tire help, still top of three. 42 is jumping in line to shove you. 38 has no help, has no help. 42 is in line with you. Still two. Let's check with Larry Mack with today's Driving Trust presented by Midas. Yeah, Mike, for the first time in Jimmy Johnson's cup career, he's got a different crew chief calling the shots. Chad Knauss is now with William Byron in the 2014. Kevin Mendering is a rookie as a cup crew chief. They started the season off right. They got the win in the clash last weekend. But a rookie crew chief, but a veteran spotter. Earl Barbin has been with Jimmy the entire time of his cup career, and the importance of the spotter we have today is priceless, and this is for sure Jimmy Johnson's Midas Driving Trust. Mike, you really, you got to trust that spotter. When he tells you it's clear up, you got to be willing to take that chance and move that car up. I know you look in the mirror, but if he says you're clear up, you got to move right then. You can't hesitate. And in turns two or three, those cars are three quarters of a mile away from the spotter's perch. There's a tension packed job. Air traffic control for a NASCAR racer at 200 miles an hour.
It's here and it's available today at your local Chevy dealer. The all new Silverado. The strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. 32 of 60 laps complete in stage one. It's a three stage race. Working lap 33, our pole sitter, William Byron, back to 14th right now. Alex Bowman, who shared the front row with him, still in the top 10. Big movers on and since the pit stop. Kyle Busch up to sixth. Brad Keselowski knocking on the door of the top 10. In 11th. Looks like that 11 and the 18, 18 are the, on the bottom with the 11 pushing, 88 right behind them. They got down there, look like they're trying to make a move here up the inside. Hey, Darrell, those four tires are starting to pay off. These guys, the 11, the 18, first cars with four tires and they are moving to take this lead. Just, I just know that the, as hot as, I know I keep saying how hot it is, but that makes a huge difference in tires and how they feel. I'm gonna get me four tires every chance I get. From 31st, Kyle Busch is looking at first place. And Mike, right there is all grip. He's in the throttle, wide open off that corner. Ricky Stenhouse may have had to lift it just a teeny bit because his car gets to pushing too much. Hey, guys, for the most part, what I'm seeing here is you look at all the drivers on the inside line. They're the ones that pitted at lap 22, and they all have four fresh tires. If you look at everybody in the outside line, which is predominantly Forge plus the Chip Ganassi Chevrolet drivers, they're the ones that did fuel only before that caution. Fourth car back on the inside is Eric Jones, one of those Toyotas, currently seventh, Jamie. He's done a really nice job coming through the pack, and he has a brand new pit crew this year. Some guys are from Joe Gibbs Racing. Two others are from Stuart Haas Racing, a Jackman and a Fueler. But on that last stop, he took four tires, and right afterwards he said, I have a vibration. I'm not sure it feels like a loose wheel, though. It may be something internal, so we'll keep our eye on the 20. Five lug nuts on each wheel when you change tires in 12 seconds for four tires. Getting all those lugs tight. That's an art. Matt? Mike, six car in line on the inside. Chase Elliott didn't have the fastest bow tie on pole day, but everybody points to him as having the best car in the race. In fact, Chase said that his car was driving so well, he was watching everyone else chasing their cars. He thinks he's in a great position. Well, I'll take a look at this replay when Kyle Busch goes to the lead. He's got some help from behind his teammate, Denny Hamlin, right there. Look at. Kyle Busch's hands, he had to make a pretty quick move on the steering wheel as those rear bumpers touch and almost turn the 18. But that's what you got to do. You got to be aggressive. You've got to push. And Denny Hamlin is one of the best at doing that also. Now, a lot of guys get upset about that. Kyle Busch saying, bring it on, brother. <laughs> if it well, makes us go faster, bring it on. He may have just called on the radio and say, hey, just tell Denny be a little <laughs> careful when he pushes me into the trial board. You may Kyle Busch told us this morning he watched yesterday's race and he was surprised that there were not more drivers willing to try the bottom, willing to put a line on the inside and make some moves. He says today would not be like yesterday at all. I didn't, you know, it's funny how it goes, but I just felt like we were going to see this kind of race today. I felt like we we're going to see two lines, a distinctive inside outside line. I'm not saying it's going to stay on the bottom all day long. They may end up back in the top four. It's over with, but right now they're in good shape on the bottom. 37 laps complete, Kyle Busch leading in a Toyota. Now here's a look at the all-new Toyota Supra as it drives full tilt through a life-size pinball machine.
41 laps complete in Daytona in the biggest race of the year. And if anybody's worried about the Chevrolets, look at positions three, five, six, seven. There are the four Hendrick cars. Well, and, and I'm just saying this out loud, but all weekend long, all we are all week long, all we've been talking about is how strong these Fords are and in numbers together, how strong they are. I just wondered, did the Chevrolets finally go, you know what, maybe we need to go talk to those Toyotas and get together here a little bit and work together to go get those Fords. And right now, that seems to be paying off. I don't know if it's orchestrated or if it's just working out and coincident. I think it's called Mr. Goodyear, Mr. Feel Good. Some have good tires, some don't right now. Well, not all the Ford drivers are playing well together. We're going to hear from Kevin Harvick and then from Ricky Stenhouse. I told him. He's going to quit side drafting so we can help him. He's going to try to hold the straight wheel here. He's doing what he's got to do. We're going backwards. Do not side draft. Just let the Ford, just let the draft do the work here. Park into the corner with the Ford State hit in your track. See what this does right here. That's a request. I'm They're just going to pull away from us, but I'll try it. And you can see right here Kevin Harvick coming right to the rear bumper, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. That's Kevin Harvick recognizing that he can push the 17 of Stenhouse to maintain that outside lane, but every time that Stenhouse was moving down to side draft off of somebody like he did there going into turn with Kurt Busch on the bottom in the one car, it just was not allowing Harvick to get lined up and be able to get close to Ricky Stenhouse. And he didn't, and he didn't want to turn him. <laughs> not now. Seven cars in front of the field. Harvick is third in that second pack. So here's our Bush Car 2 can to can trivia question. For a chance to win a special edition Bush can made from Kevin Harvick's number four car, what's NASCAR's original super speedway? Tweet your answer and use the hashtags car to can and hashtag Bush contest. Seeing a lot of side drafting as drivers try to improve their position. Passing with the aid of the airflow over the car they are trying to pass in the other lane. Larry Mack. Well, Mike, let's use our Ford Performance Aero Tracks to show you exactly what side drafting is. You're going to see when a car goes to go by another car, and you're going to see the car there approaching. You see the airflow. He moves against that car right there. And what it does, see how it starts putting a lot of pressure on the rear spoiler and then that wheel opening right there? What that's doing, it's putting drag in that car he's trying to pass, and that allows him to go on by him. It's not that the car that did the passing sped up. It's that he slowed that other car down. But what DW and Jeff, what Harvick is complaining about, that may help Stenhouse, but it's hurting the overall line because he's moving around so much. And Larry, I'll tell you what else is hurting them. If you look at this separation from this lead pack back to this car right here, Ryan Blaney, he is the first car that did not take four tires on that last pit sequence. He was able to right there break free and catch up to that group, but uh, uh, tires are making a much bigger difference than I anticipated yeah, I at think this they are. stage. 14 laps to go in stage one. Kyle Busch out in front of the Daytona 500 from 31st starting position.
The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. There's the limited edition Bush car to can that you can win throughout our coverage today. Turn two is Calamity Corner in Daytona. Jamie McMurray was a late pile in as Bubba Wallace got tangled up and put us under the second caution of the day. Kurt Busch, Kurt the Bush. number one, the black number one, right of your screen. Kurt Busch in 43. Not sure how this occurred. So you can see he went up, side draft to 17. Oh, did he and the 17 touch a little bit here? Yes. It looked like Kurt thought he could get clear and get down in front of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Just wasn't quite there yet. And Jamie McMurray in his final 500 could not avoid the 43 of Bubba Wallace. Nope, he didn't know which way they were going to go, and he guessed wrong. And Wallace with a bit of a shove there from Tyler Reddick. Sends him right into the one of Kurt Busch. You know, I'd seen Kurt Busch making a bunch of moves. I think his car was actually working pretty well. He made one move trying to go a little bit further forward. Didn't work out for him. Got him behind. Yeah, you can see from Joe Ligano's root camp. Good job. I, I almost wonder if it wasn't the air that packs. We see this so often in these cars, how unstable they are in the rear, where it just puts a little air and packs it to that left rear as Kurt Busch was turning down. If that didn't start to get him sideways. Ricky Stenhouse on his radio said he did not make contact. I think we take a closer Kurt look, Bush. see if there's some contact here. I, I felt like there might be a little bit. And I don't even know if from this angle, if we're going to be able to tell. I mean, it's so, so close. Now, right Maybe. there, they definitely made contact. Yeah. But I think prior to that, yeah. it looked to me like the air, there's so much force from that air at 200 miles per hour coming around the front bumpers of these cars. It's almost like taking two hands. Now, right there, look at that. I never, I don't think I saw well, that was late. where I they think touched. Back that up a little bit. Uh, it, pretty close. Pit Road is busy as the leaders come in. Regan. Kevin Harvick pits pit road. His biggest complaint with this race car is the guys in front of him won't stay in a straight line so that he can get a push and push them. Four tires for Kevin Harvick. Matt. And Ryan Blaney is in. He said the balance not quite as good on this run. You can see they're going to make a chassis adjustment there going around the left side. His teammate, the 22, Joey Logano is in. The Jackman eases that jack underneath because the clearance is so low with these restrictor plate cars. And he's away. The 19, you can see work going on there. Most of the team from Furniture Row Racing made that transition to the 19 at Joe Gibbs Racing. A couple new crew members, though, over the wall. Matt Tiff takes only two tires. The rookie new to front row motorsports Ford team. He'll be the leader over Ryan Blaney and Kevin Harvick. And let's get the definitive look. Ricky Stenhouse said he did not touch the number one. Right there, I would say I would believe him.
Did he or didn't he? This view is from the Goodyear blimp. I mean, right, right here already, Kurt Busch is getting a little bit loose just because of that air I talked about. But boy, if they touch, it is just barely. Mike, we've said many times, you go in the middle of the corner and touch the back of one of these cars, it's been out. I think he might have just touched him lightly. Kyle Busch has led more laps in the Daytona 500 without a victory than anyone except Tony Stewart. And he leads his teammate, Denny Hamlin, to the restart green from the outside and drops low in front of Hamlin. A little bit surprised that the Joe Gibbs Racing teammates didn't get as coordinated to try to all get in line. You see Eric Jones leading that outside lane. He knows how to get it done here. One here last July in Daytona. When they come around, it'll be six laps to the end of stage one. Here's Hamlin's radio prior to the restart. The guys let each other in or no? JGR HMS guys talking about letting each other in. KB's taking the top. We're going to let him in. Uh, hoping the 24 has been discussed up here for sure. The 24 let the 20 in, then he'll have the 9 and 48. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that makes sense. Well, JGR and HMS, that's Joe Gibbs Racing and Hendrick Motorsports, and that's an uneasy alliance of those Toyotas and Chevrolets. But that's confirmation that they have definitely been talking, and that, to me, speaks volumes about what they're up against. They just felt like they were not able to get the job done on their own alliances. Regan. Guys, there was a lot of talk in the garage this morning about two organizations you wouldn't normally expect working together to work together. It's pretty obvious which two organizations that was now. They said they had to do this in order to compete with the Fords today. I think it's monkey see, monkey do. When you see what these Ford guys have done at Talladega last fall and over here in the last couple of weeks or the last week, uh, you got to take, you got to, you got to know what's going on and you got to react. And I think that's what we're seeing. I think we're seeing a huge reaction. Ford's well, coming back on the outside. Joey yeah. Logano in the 22. Ryan Blaney, his Penske teammate in the 12. And we've seen what this combination can do. Those two nose to tail. That's what won the duels here on Thursday. The 22 car is pretty fast. Even by himself, you see him on the outside here at Tiff. And um, he's able to maintain and maybe even make this pass all by himself. He's going to get 12 to help him maybe. That'll be help. That'll help him out. Vince? Matt Tift in that 36 car making his first Cup Series start after a couple of years in the Xfinity Series. Don't forget, less than three years ago, he had surgery to remove a brain tumor. So it's just a miracle in parts that he's racing at all. But it didn't take him long. Two months later, he was back in a car in the Xfinity Series. Today, making his first start in the Daytona 500. Got to the front by taking just two tires on that stop. Good move. It'll be three laps to go to the end of stage one. This race is run in three stages. Points are awarded at the end of each stage, and then we'll have pit stops and reset for the next one. Joey Logano has caught the lead line there in eighth place. And not content with staying in line, he goes right around the outside of the nine of Chase Elliott. Car is really fast. I mean, he's working that outside, and a lot of that's been by himself. Bringing along Ryan Blaney, too. Looks like he's going to get to the inside of Chase Elliott down the back straightaway. Another Ford behind him, Daniel Suarez. Chase Elliott going to lose a lot of spots here if he can't get down. Get down behind that. And here goes the 22 Logano again going to the outside of Ricky Stenhouse. Well, Logano and Blaney. That's the team that won their dual race here Thursday night. Joey Logano with a big push from Ryan Blaney. Paper is closed. Pits are closed with two laps to go at the end of each stage. Mike, I like the way Joey Logano in that 22 car, though, is he can get on that outside all by himself and work around the cars in front of him. He seems to have a really, really fast car, and it handles really well when they put tires on it. He's going to have... Uh, Ricky Stenhouse and Daniel Suarez pulling up behind him yeah, in just, boards. Yeah, you know, every point is valuable throughout the season. We saw how important it was to get points, get stage points or playoff points. So these guys are going to be going for it to try to get make something happen. I don't know if they're going to be content just to ride in line. 
The score is drove it in there under the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse, and it's stuck. So uh, good move on his part, on Suarez's his part. One more lap, and they'll wave a green and white checkered flag to end stage one. Lacoste and Legato's coming. Legato wants those points. He's he knows how hard he had to earn the way to that championship four without the points that some of the others he went up against had. 88 drove up in front of him and, blo and broke his momentum. I don't know how that's going to affect him against the third turn here. See where he goes. Remember all week we said you can't pass? Well, let me tell you, yes, you can. Look at Kyle Larson of the 42. Where'd he come from? Bowman on the outside gets to the rear bumper, Kyle Busch. Watch Here we his, come. Watch this 22. I know he wants to drop down. I don't think he's going to be able to, but it's what he'd like to do. To end stage one. He's to looking, the line, Kyle looking. Busch, Alex Bowman, Joey Logano, Daniel Suarez, and Ryan Blaney. I read a story advancing the 500 that used words like lackluster and snooze fest. Take that paper, put it in the bottom of the birdcage. <laughs>the Daytona 500 on Fox. It's sponsored by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Great taste, zero sugar. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR, perfect for race fans. Stage one in the books, Kyle Busch gets his 21st career stage win. He had six of them. In 2018, his older brother, Kurt Busch, will get the free pass. He got went one lap down in that accident on lap 50. Mike, did you see the crowd here today? Um, unbelievable. Sell out crowd. Over 100,000 folks here today to watch this amazing race. Jamie? And Alex Bowman in the 88 doing a really nice job. Car coming to him just still a little bit tight, so they're calling for four tires. Meanwhile, the 18 of Kyle Busch, he's just asking for a Gatorade. These drivers are earning it today. It's so warm. You see the tear off off the front there. He wants a pack of ice as well and a four tire stop. An interesting uh, race off pit road fueled by Sunoco with a variety of strategies there. Not everybody came to pit road, but our stage one winner is KB, Kyle Busch.
points to it. Monster Energy brought the action. The Monster Energy Unknown Industries team hit the pavement, brought their entire bag of tricks, and had some fun for the race fans here. Look at this beautiful aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Win your battles, earn your name. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. This is incredible. All the motor coaches that are parked in the infield, the people are here camping out, all the people in the grandstand. This may be the biggest crowd I've seen here in quite some time. Overall, infield, grandstand, the whole thing. And what a show they're seeing so far. This is a fantastic Daytona 500. Alex Bowman, Corey LaJoy, Parker Kligerman, Matt Tift in. For a, a late stop before we go with stage two, so is Jamie McMurray and Kurt Busch. Now, the first 13 drivers, Larry, did not stop. Uh, Chase Elliott came in and made a second pit stop. What happened? Yeah, he came in and did a four-tire stop, Mike, but what happened, the rear tire changer's air hose got hooked on the front tire carrier of Eric Jones's 20 crew, so they did not get all the lug nuts tight. That's why he had to come back to pit road. You're going to see it right there. He's going to come around and see how his air hose is wrapped around the tire carrier. He's still pulling on it, and that's why they had to come back in because all the lugs were not were not tight. So Chase Elliott will restart 34th. When we go back to green, the first 13 drivers did not stop because they stopped back at the caution on lap 50. Yeah, and going back to what Larry was pointing out there, those tire carriers have, are changers. As they come over that wall, they whip that hose to keep it clear uh, as they come around the corner. He whipped it and it caught on the car behind him and the tire changer behind him of Eric Jones. Four Fords at the front of the field, Logano, Suarez, Blaney, and Harvey. Daniel Hemrick, the lone Chevrolet, it's all Fords in the rest of the top 10. Castle, Dillon, and Reagan, those are the drivers who did not stop. Pit crew guys look like they're from outer space. I don't know, helmets and the socks over their face. Stage two about to get its first green flag as the drivers approach the Geico restart zone. Green flag. Suarez about to get swallowed up by Joey Logano on the inside and the four of Kevin Harvick right on his bumper. But you know what? That's got to be a big thrill for Suarez driving that 41 car for the first time. Car Kurt Busch drove last year and he's leading the Daytona 500. That's got to be a big thrill for him. But I think the potent combination is all these guys are on the inside, the 22, the 12, the Logano, Blaney. That's a bunch of really good race cars. Saw right there, Daniel Hemrick just got put in the middle by Paul Menard. He's the lone Chevrolet that's up there among these Fords right now. That would be an NFL, not for long. Vince. Suarez uh, had a near miss just prior to that caution. Uh, he uh, was behind or around Michael McDowell. McDowell got loose and Suarez had to avoid him. Grazed the wall a little bit. A little bit of scuff on those right side tires says spotter Tony Range, but still the yellow Goodyear markings are on them. So they're not too concerned, but there was definitely a little bit of wall contact for the 41. Well, who's coming right up behind him? Michael McDowell. Maybe with a little help this time. And then Ryan Newman. Tell you what, that 41 car, though, is for is he's not giving up. He's uh, working hard on that outside. 
I think the fastest car here and has been pretty much all week is that 22 car. He's going to be hard to get back around, but maybe with some help they can do it. Maybe Suarez can do it. Eight Fords at the front, then two Chevrolets. The first Toyota in the race is 95 De Benedetto. Now eight. Yeah, but I don't know if he had any issue on a pit stop earlier in the in the race, but he faded to the back. Now he's fighting his way back to the front on the outside, three wide. I tell you that 95 car, Benedetto, and Mike Wheeler, the crew chief on that car. That thing is going somewhere, boys. Going to the front on the outside. He's got some help from Kyle Busch, fellow Toyota teammate there behind him. Kind of funny after we run a little while we 60 laps now we're here at uh, what we're at 80 uh, 68 laps and now it things start to start to move around a little bit you get a little more comfortable you start to move one lane to the other you start trying things it's a long way to the end but you kind of got that first 60 laps under your belt now you're ready to experiment a little bit let me see what I got here five cars six cars on the bottom trying to break away on the short way around led by Joey Logano. Ryan Blaney, Daniel Suarez, Kurt, or rather Kevin Harvick, Eric Almirola, and Paul Menard. And remember, all those cars stayed out on that last caution, did not come in to get tires at the end of the stage. Matt DiBenedetto is actually, I believe, the first car that did pit under that caution to take four tires. Well, we saw under caution the issue with Chase Elliott's uh, air hose for the tire changer. Here's Jamie. And this is Kevin Harris. This is who it happened to. He basically got lassoed by the rope, and you still continued to change tires. What did you see? Yeah, uh, you got to always finish the stop no matter what happens. You got to chase an Eric fighting for everything they can get out here. Uh, typically big boxes here in Daytona, but when those guys are that close, things get tight. Um, I had the nine toes wrapped around me, which, you know, messed up their stop, but it also slowed us down. I was able to get it off. We finished it. Um, other than some hurt feelings, I'm uh, doing just fine. So we're glad we're still out there. Yeah. Job well done by you. Thank you. Good to hear. Well, that hose went right around his neck. Yeah, his driver's in ninth. Mike, I think when everything evens out, everybody's on pretty similar tires. I think we're seeing what we thought we might see. We see a bunch of Fords, six of them at the front of the field right now. Uh, and they're hooked up and looking pretty comfortable. Daniel Hemrick, the first Chevy in seventh. Eric Jones, the first Toyota in ninth. Stay right here. You won't miss a minute as we go double wide.
74 laps complete as we were double wide the fuel window open to make it to the end of stage two and there were 12 takers but two speeding penalties Paul Menard and David Reagan were speeding on pit road under green uh, Mike I'm always surprised that the guys can cut down to 55 they're doing 200 mile an hour they're down to 55 and down pit road I'm surprised we don't have more speeders Reagan. Denny Hamlin hits his pit box. They didn't want to pit by themselves like they are right now, but they didn't get the car full of fuel on the last pit stop, so they had no choice. Fuel only for him. He's going to have to hope to find a drafting partner when he gets back out there. Leading the field, Matt DiBenedetto from California, who jokingly said as a child he came to the conclusion that he must be adopted because nobody in his family had a racing background, and all he wanted to do was race. <laughs> he drove for a smaller team last year, had the chance to move up to Levine Family Racing. Uh, Bob Levine made a big investment in an alliance with Joe Gibbs Racing and a shift to Toyota, and they've got a car fast enough to lead the 500. Mike, we always said that Matt was an overachiever, that he got more out of his equipment than than he should. And we always felt if he had a first class, if he had a car that could run up front, that he was a driver that could get the job done. And by golly, today he's proven it. I think there's a lot of smiles on folks faces seeing this guy get this chance get this opportunity that he's worked so hard for can't wait to see how the 2019 season unfolds for Matt DiBenedetto and that crew chief Mike Wheeler. I think that's the key uh, Jeff is he's got an incredible crew chief with a lot of experience Mike Wheeler wheels they call him. I think that's going to be a good combination. Vince. Well and as you noted earlier in the uh, broadcast Mike uh, Mike Wheeler. 2016 Daytona 500 winning crew chief with Denny Hamlin and I asked him about winning that uh, 500 he said I don't hardly remember much about it because we were so busy trying to get ready for the next race he said I'll make sure I enjoy it a lot more this time if we would happen to win but they know that they have a steep mountain to climb beginning this team rebuilding it from last year and he is challenged but he said we've got good people and we've got them in the right place and we're seeing some of that today I think Wheeler came to the Cup Series from the NASCAR Mon out on Long Island. Seventy seven laps complete. How about a quick word from Duracell? This is the number one trusted brand. Matt DiBenedetto, Kyle Bush, two Toyotas leading the Chevrolets that started on the front row. Alex Bowman from Tucson Arizona William Byron from Charlotte Michigan's Eric Jones in a Toyota rounds out the top five. Thirty three cars on the lead lap Matt Chase Elliott back up to the sixth position on the previous run His water temperature had climbed up over two hundred and seventy degrees. He was poking his nose out trying to keep it cool down on that last stop. You saw the issue with the air hose from the 20. He came back around hit pit road because due to all that time they didn't have a chance to pull the piece of tape off the left side of the grill to get more air to keep it cool. Kurt Busch on pit road they have to clean up the back end of that car from crash damage before NASCAR let him back out onto the racetrack. Seventy nine laps complete. What should we do. I know uh, what we should do. I got a good idea Mike. Let's crank, Let's crank it, it up. up. Our group has had, they haven't pitted yet. They're just kind of chipping away. I think they're kind of chipping off the group behind us there a little bit. They're a couple tenths faster there. They're starting to pit it behind them now. So I'll keep you posted here, man. Just keep digging. Pit stop splash and go for Martin Truex trying to win his first 500. He came closer than anyone has without winning it on a tenth of a second. Matt. 
And Mike, a number of teams hitting pit road like he Doc managed just for a top off of fuel. Martin Truex Jr. was one of those. They topped him off on fuel. And earlier you, you heard the 22 when he did his fuel only, he eased into his box. That's why it might have taken maybe an extra second or two trying not to slide those tires that they would have to change them, Regan. Jimmy Johnson hits his bit box as well. His race car has been just a little bit too loose in three and four because of the sun. Fuel only for him as well. Jimmy Johnson was screaming off turn four to get to pit road. Really had to jump on the brakes to get down to the 55 mile an hour mandated pit road speed. We saw in the duels how crucial it was to get on and off pit road and execute on pit road if you were going to come out and be in that lead path. Mike, those are all things you work out in the previous races and those preliminary races so you can hit that pit road hot and heavy today and be on the money. We saw guys practicing coming on pit road uh, in practice yesterday. A lot of guys did that just to verify their lights, be sure they were spot on. Six cars in that lead draft, three Toyotas, three Chevrolets. Grass Valley, California's Matt DiBenedetto. What a great story. Changing his fortunes. He left, he announced he was going to leave the 32 last season before he had a ride lined up, convinced that fortune would find him. And it did. So like, here we are, we make all these predictions. Who's going to win? Who's going to be the guy to beat today? I don't think any of us mentioned De Benedetto as a guy that might be a dark horse that could win this race. That's true, but he did impress us all in the duel, and he did start the Daytona 500 as the highest Toyota. I'd wreck my grandmother to win the Daytona 500. Are you kidding me? I'd like to think I wouldn't wreck somebody, but um, I'd do about anything else. I'd shave my head for a year to win the 500. Every day, just totally bald. I'd rock it if I'd win the 500 once. And I'd look weird, I got a weird looking head. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This morning in the Sunoco suite, a fan asked Kyle Busch, What's your strategy with five laps to go? He goes, wreck them all. <laughs> Everybody laughed, including Kyle. Oh, man. Oh, well, Eric Jones, he might look 
weird if he does that, but man, he'll have that trophy. There he is in fifth place in his number 20. Chase Elliott was interesting this morning. We talked to him in the elevator. He was on the way to an appearance. They talked about his car and about maybe hoping he had more friends to draft with than he needed. He did get really animated about one topic. He got to take his dog twice over to the beach this week. <laughs> hasn't had a chance to do that much. Well, and he hasn't had the best of weeks, so that might have been one of the better parts of his week, but he's having a pretty darn good Daytona 500 right now. When all else fails, you get your best friend, which is your dog. <laughs> Time for our next Bush Car to Can trivia question for your chance to win a special edition Bush Can made from Kevin Harvick's number four car. What's the only track that's been on the NASCAR Cup Series schedule since 1949? Tweet your answer using the hashtag Car to Can and the hashtag Bush Contest. Do I get to use the stat guys to help me answer that? <laughs> there, <laughs> there you go. There they are. Go ahead and read it. <laughs> We're not allowed. Hey, to you're going to have to cut that out. I'm going to take that board away from you. Every time there's a, a question, I look over and you got the answer on it. We were doing trivia in final practice yesterday on FS1, and Jeff knew the answer to every question <laughs> yeah. because they were provided to him over our shoulder, except for the last one, which he couldn't read the handwriting. No, I couldn't read it. Oh, I only was, had the first name. It, he thought it was Paul Goldfish. And, and, and now DW thinks that I cheated everything. Paul. Yeah, that, he backed into that trophy that he got from Chase Elliott. I saw oh, that. Oh, come on. That was straight. Paul Goldsmith who uh, won the uh, last uh, beach race. <laughs> he owned the Goodyear building at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Having a look at Denny Hamlin, who is back in 21st now, Regan. Guys, we got a little bit of a developing story on Denny Hamlin's race car. Take a listen to this. Need you to start trying to save a little bit of fuel here. Jeez, really? Denny, we're still trying to figure it out, but we still don't think we got enough in. We still don't know why. Just run as long as you can run, then we'll have to go to our switch. Right now, we're thinking we're five to eight short. Wow, five right. to eight short. That's huge. That's a lot, Larry. Guys, when I look at our top six drivers right now, Matt DiBenedetto in the 95 car all the way back through Chase Elliott in the nine, they're the only six drivers that's not pitted. Now, I felt like maybe they were going to split this stage in half, which would put it right now in the next lap or two. But if I'm one of their crew chiefs, I'm looking at the lap times. Stay in uniform like they are. They are cutting laps over 200 miles per hour. I would run it till I have to pit, which is going to be somewhere around lap 105. Why break up a good thing early? Right, Larry. This group of Chevys and Toyotas are half a second a lap faster than any group of Fords on the track right now. Well, that lead group is getting just a little sniff. Not a lot of draft off of those cars in front of them, but they're getting a little sniff from that group in front of them. And all that does is just pad some of their uh, ability to come down pit road and, and be able to come back out potentially in the lead. Matt Yoakum. Mike, impressive conversation between the driver, the 24, William Byron, and Chad can ask just about how to fix the car throughout the race, but good insight and communication from his teammate, the 88. Bowman asked Byron to give him a little bit of a gap in three and four because his car is on the loose side. He doesn't want it to swing out. Last time Chad Knauss worked with the 24 car in the 500 was in 1997. He went to victory lane with Jeff Gordon almost a year before William Byron was born. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty amazing what Chad Knauss has been up to do if you think about it in the sport. You know, being a fabricator, being on pit road as a tire changer, and now look at him, a seven-time Champion. When he was working at DEI and I was driving the one car, he was changing tires for us. And he always said, I want to be a crew chief. I said, Chad, I just don't know if you have the personality and the demeanor for that. You're always a little over the top. But he got he learned how to control those emotions and apply them. And he's the master. I don't care what you say, he's the master. 93 laps complete. We're 33 laps into this 60 lap stage two. And we're going to take you side by side.
with the talk all week long in Daytona about how fast the Fords are. Matt DiBenedetto's Toyota has led the most laps so far. He's been out front twice now for a total of 38 of the 96 laps. It's just, that's a head scratcher. <laughs> we just, we just, he's had a great week, no question about it, but we didn't see this coming. And what's even more surprising is how few cars are in that draft that Matt DiBenedetto is leading, yet they're catching this huge pack here in front of them off of turn two. So let's open the forum for our great debate sponsored by McDonald's about veteran drivers who have a Daytona drought. Martin Truex, Kyle Busch, Clint Boyer, Brad Keselowski, all but double digits, but Brad trying to win the great American race. Who gets there first? I thought it would be Martin Truex. I thought he was going to have a, a, a great day today, but uh, so far it hadn't materialized. I don't I don't know. What do you think? Well, and I really thought Clint Boyer did a great job in the duel, and I thought even though he didn't win that duel, I thought he learned a lot from what Joey Logano did to get that lead, and he would take that into today's race. But right now, Kyle Busch is looking pretty good in second place. Jamie? Kyle Busch content right now running behind Matt DiBenedetto. Now remember, Matt DiBenedetto and Kyle Busch were once teammates at Joe Gibbs Racing back in 2009, 2010, when they ran in the Xfinity Series. And Matt and Kyle, good friends, friendly with each other. They know they can trust one another. And you know, Matt really looks up to Kyle. Kyle right now radioing to his team, telling him not only what Matt's car is doing, but what his is doing. He's saying he's got a four-wheel drift into three and four. Vince? Well, it's interesting, Jamie. During the duels, Matt cut T Kyle Busch a break. Kyle needed to get in, and Matt gave him the space to do so. Kyle Busch texted uh, Matt DiBenedetto afterwards and told him, thank you for that. Matt told me today, he said, those are the kind of things that can come back to help you when it really counts, maybe like in the Daytona 500. Boy, they just went around Kyle Larson. He has just had a miserable week down here. I don't know what's wrong with that car, but it's just not been up to speed. No, but Kyle Larson's not giving up. He's fighting hard on the outside, trying to side draft Kyle Busch. Right now, Matt DiBenedetto having a great Daytona 500, but he's looking ahead of him and a gaggle of cars going, what am I going to do when I get there? Halfway in the 61st Daytona 500. You think that uh, little bit of protein and a lot of carbs lunch <laughs> that Matt DiBenedetto told J.J. Watt about <laughs> during Michael's gridwalk is about kicking in? I think so. Oh, definitely working, whatever it was. Yeah, this is going to be interesting, uh, uh, Jeff, to see what Matt does with all these cars in front of him. Uh, kind of have to be a really, really cautious here and work his way through here. Yeah, certainly no reason to take any risk and chances right now, knowing that a pit stop is going to be coming. Well, I think his savvy crew chief, Mike Wheeler, down there, he's probably saying lap all of them, lap many of them as you can. Right now, Denny Hamlin, who Wheeler used to work for as a crew chief, is looking alongside him going, wait a minute, is that the leader? <laughs> Vince? You know, it's interesting to Benedetto and Mike Wheeler and their spotter, Doug Campbell, got together and watched video because it's the first time the three of them have all worked together. And they talked about during different situations in the duel about how they would react, how the spotter would call it, what uh, Matt was expecting to hear from the spotter during those situations. I don't know if they expected to be hearing it while leading, but this is a situation exactly like what they prepared for. Yeah, Vince, this is nerve wracking right here. You've got a car that's fast, You've got a car that can win this race. Now you're up in the middle of a a bunch of cars here that you're trying to put a lap down and you got to be careful but you got to be aggressive you're in rush hour right there there's the 95 he is your leader look at the scrum that he's involved with here you know guys what I would be doing right now is the six spotters the three for these Toyota drivers and the three for those Chevrolet, Chevrolet Hendrick drivers they need to be communicating right now. Now would be a good time to get in there and get to pit road because really the window, they're there now. They need to get into pit road. Boy, did you see right there how aggressive the 42 of Larson was to try to stay on the lead lap? Kyle Busch went to the bottom to take the lead away from Matt DiBenedetto. Ooh, the 42 ooh. of Larson, now DiBenedetto goes to the inside. Man, he is getting aggressive. You just you don't know where to go. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, rolling the dice right here. 
Matt? And, Mike, that's exactly what Tab Boyd, William Byron Spotter, has told him. We're going to be pitting in around six to seven laps, so we need to get ourselves down on the bottom here pretty soon. Yeah, well, you can't pit from the outside lane. One good thing about this pack of cars, you can save a little fuel because there's no way you're going to be able to run wide open right now. You have to work the throttle a little bit here, so you can save a little bit of fuel. I don't know if that'll help you or not, but you could. And, and if you're wondering at home, why would these guys get up there and get that aggressive like we just saw that move that Matt Benedetto made? They want to put as many of these cars a lap down as right. possible because if the caution comes out, or, or if they do the pit sequence, whatever happens, the more cars you have a lap down, the less cars you have to race for the lead and the win later in this race. You, one thing about Kyle Larson, he doesn't want to be a lap down if he can help it. He is all over to Benedetto. That 42 right in the middle, Ryan Priest, the rookie on the outside. Big crowd in his hometown at the train station, Berlin, Connecticut, Tavern on the tracks all watching today. Mike, this little situation right here has got disaster written all over. Yes, it does, DW. I'm just telling well, you. Well, then why not pit now? Well, Guys, I can't get I'd down. I can't right get down. You've got all six <laughs> of them lined up on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Larry. They just moved themselves into position. They all want to pit together. They said, let's get out of this and go and come to pit road. Here's uh, Kyle Busch's radio. The 11th a lot down here. We need him to lead us. He's going to pit with us. We need him to beat us on pit road and lead us. We'll be way ahead of the other guys. So we can let him go. David Reagan alongside of the 11, Denny Hamlin. Hmm. That's one of those situations may go. Hmm. 14 to go this time by. Still a lot of traffic ahead of those leaders, and those are good cars they're trying to lap. They're great not cars. Not going to be easy. The head of that pack. Boy, they're not Paul. coming. I, I thought for sure they were coming that time, the way that they uh, sort of checked up from that group. I, I think they used it. I think the discretion here. Trouble I think, turn one. Oh, yeah, here we go. In front of this whole group. Parker Kligerman down on the inside, and that is Casey Mears. How did all those cars make it through there? Oh, my goodness. Caution. All those cars coming up on these guys when Casey Mears had the issue and lost control. Third time today, the caution has waved for an incident. There's Kligerman who raced his way into the 500. Got a rub on this. Something's been rubbing on his left rear there. He's rubbed all the Goodyear off of it. Obviously, if a lot of smoke Flat. from uh, Casey Mears, number 27, the second Jermaine racing car. Although, Mike, I almost thought it looked like the track bar might be broken on that 96 car, the way that rear end was moving around. We'll have a look in progress. There was contact between the two. Around went Kligerman. Yeah, just so hard to tell from that angle. And with the leaders on rushing, well, that's what, oh, oh yeah, right. right there. I, I don't know if the 27 of Mears came up or the 96 of Kligerman came down, but definitely contact there going into turn one. I believe, I, I might be wrong. We'll have to check and see, but it looked like maybe the rear end was moving that car like a track bar broke. Uh, Looks to me Kligerman. like Kligerman is the one that's not too happy about it. Oh, yeah, I'll come up here. I got something I want to show you. Larry, what does this do for the drivers who have not pitted yet? Well, they've got to pit, Mike, because remember, they pitted with 58 laps to go in this stage. If they had a pitted, and I know you don't have a crystal ball, but if they had a pitted, they would be able to be out there and, and probably keep the lead of this race. But I think because of all the cars that were in front of them, they're going to be way back in the pack with just a handful of laps to go in this second stage. Yeah, but if they put four tires on Larry, I think they drive up through there pretty quick as a group because those other guys' tires are really old. Here is 14th place, Clint Boyer's radio. Right now, if we stay out here, if it goes our way, we'll get a couple stage points. If it doesn't, we won't get any, and then we're still going to have to pit at the end of the stage. Or we can come get our tires and fuel now, ride out the rest of the stage, and get ready for the third segment. It's all about the third segment. We need about stage points. I agree. You want to win the Daytona 500 or you I want agree. to get some playoff points? Yeah, it's not worth the gamble. Come, do what you got to do. Set up for the end of the race. And I, again, their tires are so old. They've been out there for such a long time. And I'm pretty sure these others that are leading are going to come down, get four tires. And I think those four tires, because of the difference in, in grip level, is going to make a huge difference, even with what 
12 laps to go, 11 laps yeah, to go. Yeah, they're going to they're going to need eight or 10 laps to to make it work. So I'm I don't know. It'll be interesting to see when we go back to green here. Matt Tift will get the free pass. He was the first car one lap down at the time of the caution, running in 23rd. 107 laps complete in Daytona. Matt DiBenedetto, Kyle Busch headed out of pit road along with Alex Bowman, William Byron, Chase Elliott, and others. Vince. Well, who had Matt DiBenedetto leading the most laps to pass the halfway mark here in the Daytona 500? But they have been rock solid. They didn't want that caution when it fell. The car has been good. It's going to be a four tire change. No other adjustments for DiBenedetto. Matt, or uh, Jamie? Alex Bowman in the 88 had some right rear quarter panel damage earlier. They fixed it up, but his car is just so loose. A four tire stop. Meanwhile, the 18, a Kyle Bush. He said he has the four wheel drift. You see, they made a chassis adjustment, air pressure, four tires, Matt. William Byron said he could stand his car to be a little bit on the tighter side. Air pressure change on the 24. Here's your Sunoco race off pit road. Kyle Busch out first, and that caution a big benefit for Denny Hamlin. He had just passed DiBenedetto to get back on the lead lap before the caution flag occurred. So he'll be battling for the lead when we come back. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. And by the all new Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. The field comes by with 10 laps to go in stage two and third generation racer Ryan Blaney leading. Let's go to the studio for a monster energy race break. Hey, th thanks so much, Mike Shannon Spake here with Ricky Craven and Bobby Labonte. Uh, you know, we talked all week if we thought the bottom line was going to come in during this race, and, and I think that it 
came in, and it came in very soon. Yeah, so it's the fourth consecutive day of racing, and that always has an effect on the racetrack. The Toyotas were relatively silent during the week. They're racing with authority today. They have a really good handle, maybe a little extra downforce. Larry referred to that earlier, and it's paying dividends right now. The heat of the racetrack, the ambient temperature, People having to lift, it makes for side-by-side -side racing. That's what we've seen. So that's so good to see, and I'm glad that we're uh, we're doing that right now. Yeah, also interesting to see those Chevy and Toyotas work together against the Ford. Let's show you how things have gone down. Of course, we started the race early on, lap 11. It was a tribute lap for J.D. Gibbs, who lost his life last month. And Daniel Suarez, one of the former Joe Gibbs Racing Teams, 41, has an issue on pit road. Of course, he's now with Stuart Haas Racing. And Corey LaJoy, the face was not it wasn't good right we had a yeah. we had an incident and then of course this guys yeah exactly I, you know Ricky Stenhouse you got um, Kurt Busch going around the outside well a little bit of contact I mean it was just barely but doesn't take much Rick, does it could Ricky have let <laughs> off a little bit sure I think so Yes, of course, Kyle Busch goes on to win stage one and we are currently under caution as well we'll go back out to Mike thanks Shannon Ricky Bobby back in the studio Ryan Blaney third generation racer his grandfather, Lou, a great sprint car driver. His dad, Dave, World of Outlaws champion and a cup regular, came real close to a cup win in Atlanta. Drive for Bill Davis and Ryan Blaney, now with Team Penske. He's out front. So are you calling one of those guys Ricky Bobby, or is it because it's Ricky and Bobby? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Glad you noticed. Thank you. <laughs> and what a different Daytona 500 for Ryan Blaney from a year ago. He led the most laps in last year's Daytona 500. Let's see if he can get some of those laps led here today. Here they come to the Geico restart zone. The first four cars did not stop. Blaney, Keselowski, Priest, and Larson. And give Kyle Larson a lot of credit for how far hard he fought to stay on that lead lap. Now they're just hoping they can keep it under them for the remainder of this stage here. Well, you know what? I'm impressed with that two car because he's got his teammate in front of him now and the two car. We haven't spoken much about Keselowski the whole race, but here he is. He finally worked his way to the front. I don't know if he can stay there or not, but he's up there now. Well, you talked to him in the pre-race. One thing driver number two does not lack, confidence. Well, that's for sure, especially on these types of tracks. But. Penske Mustangs up front, inside, Blaney outside. Keselowski and Blaney cannot come up now. Yeah, he wasn't sure. He started to make the move, but then he realized he could pull up in front of his teammate, and he did. Well, it's so hard for the spotters to clear those drivers looking head on at those cars as you ride with Ryan Priest. Yeah, I was going to say, looking head on is Ryan Priest. What a great job he's been doing today. Stay out of trouble. Has our visor camera on board, giving us some amazing shots. You want to know what it's like. To be up front in the Daytona 500, your first Daytona 500, this is it. That's a, that team is another team that's made a huge investment in their, in their teams this year. Better equipment, better people, more technology. Ryan Reese's granddad built modifieds, winning cars. His dad raced late models. He grew up in his father's garage handing him tools. Oh, look at that glare. Yeah, you talk about all the different obstacles you're going to face and challenges here in the Daytona 500 right now. One of those is that glare and that sun coming through the windshield off of turn four. And Mike, you just blind. It's, it's momentarily, but for a second or so, you're blinded. You can't see anything in front of you till you get back in the shade. Chase Elliott working underneath the number 20 of Eric Jones. Chevy and a Toyota there. David Reagan just ahead on the outside and the 38. Now the top two. Again, had not pitted. They were on older tires doing a great job. William Byron has those tires being aggressive. You see now Eric Almirola coming into the picture. Right now, it's not working out great for Larson. Nor is it for Joey Logano in that yellow 22 Ford. He was behind rookie Ryan Priest when they put him in the middle, and he goes backwards like a hot dog shooting out of a bun. Yeah, no kidding. But just, just think about Almirola. I mean, he had this race one last year, all the way to the third turn. And here he is right now. Got a good shot here grabbing the lead. I just have a feeling maybe Ryan Priest had a big moment there when they went to shuffle him. He had to check up because he lost a lot of uh, spots there in a hurry. Let's check with Matt on our leader. Mike, Ryan Blaney told me he'll always feel like a member of the Wood Brothers family. Ryan had a favorite picture 
of Patriarch Glenn's from his driving days. Shortly after his passing, he sent that image to his helmet painter, Jason Beam, who meticulously recreated Glenn's helmet onto Ryan's every detail, right down to the stitching and the leather look on the chin strap. A heartfelt tribute for such a special man. Hey, that, the, the last helmet I saw that I didn't have my picture on it, Jimmy Johnson, remember he had a helmet. He's gonna. He's got 83 wins, and Bobby Allison and I both have 84. And he had a helmet with my picture on one side and Bobby's on the other. I saw that helmet once. I haven't seen it since. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Wonder happened what happened to it. To it. I, I want to know. Did you ever wear a leather helmet? Hey, buddy. <laughs> you know I'm messing. I, I, with you. I didn't race on the beach. <laughs> I didn't wear a leather helmet, but I did starch my uniform in, in fireproof solution down here one year. <laughs> Five laps to go in stage two. Larry, the pits will close with two to go. You expect anybody to come in under green before then? I, I don't, <laughs> Mike, because this this next stage is a totally different animal because remember, it's gonna be 80 laps and everybody will have to pit once. I, I feel like that that you may see some guys stay out, but if I was crew chief in any of these cars, I'd come get four fresh tires because I may have to go 40 laps on them once we go back racing in stage three. How about the third place car, Eric Almarola? Jamie. Well, last week, Mike, Eric Almarola posted a picture on Twitter. It was the moment when he was turned into the wall at the last lap of the Daytona 500, and all it said was redemption. I talked to him and his team. They brought the same setup they ran at Talladega last fall, and they won that race. So they were pretty confident coming in. But this 10 car, it's getting better as we run. Yeah, and, and Mike, you talk about pitting. If you did, you'd cause a hell of a mess right now. That's all I can tell you, because the way they're all bunched up here. Talked to him this morning, calm, confident. He said, I just want a chance to be in that front group on the last lap. You know why, Mike? Because think about Eric Almarone. Last year he finished fifth in the points, and he won a race. I think he really helped his confidence in this team. They believe in him. I think he's Ooh. a guy to keep an eye well, on. No, overheating. Who's there overheating I think that's there? Ricky Stenhouse, Jr. Could be, uh, or Harvick. One of those cars, yeah, maybe it's Ricky Stenhouse. Well, these guys, they were really close in the draft, and we know what happens when you're that tight. Just no air is going to get to that radiator and it's going to start to overheat. Now I don't see it. I saw it going down the back straightaway. I don't see anything. All right, the pits are closed. Ryan Blaney led 118 laps of the 500 last year, most of any driver, and won stage two one year ago. Kyle Busch was our stage one winner for Toyota. Ford Mustang out front right now in the top two spots. Top three, Chevrolet fourth. Nice Toyota is DiBenedetto, 95. They're slicing and dicing, trying to make something happen here coming to the, uh, to the stage break. William Byron in the 24, our pole sitter. Looking around on Brad Keselowski. He's got a run on the two, but holds his spot. Oh, he's going to get to the outside. I don't know. Boy, it did look like Keselowski really fought him there. I think those four tires are going to pay off here. If if William Byron can keep the 10 of Eric Almirola on his bumper, he might get a run on Ryan Blaney here. I think he's going to get boxed. Final lap, stage two. Everybody jostling for stage points. I think right here, it's uh, Blaney's got to worry about himself. He'd like to help Keselowski. But he just can't do it. it. It might jeopardize him winning this stage. So I think he's going to hold what he's got. Yeah, William Byron's You're shot clear. was right there. Blaney did a great job blocking the bottom lane. On the top side, Ryan Blaney brings him to the green and white checkered flag and wins stage two in his Penske Ford. Mike, you help you when you can. You help your teammates. But when it means it's going to hurt you, you got to just worry about yourself. Ryan Blaney with the Mustang out front with 80 laps to go in the Daytona 500. He's our stage two winner.
Stage two of the Daytona 500 is complete. 79 laps to go. Ryan Blaney, who won the second stage last year, repeats in that position in his Penske Ford. And here they come to pit road. Lead lap cars are in. Jamie. And Eric Almirola in the 10. The call is hot dogs. So we'll have to see what that means. He's a little bit tight, but definitely better as he ran in the front car handle better. The two of Brad Keselowski in as well. He said he's a little bit loose in, but overall the car is better. So as the sun is starting to set, cars are better, Matt. And the 24 of William Byron, he says this is the best the car has handled all day. He didn't, didn't really want many changes, if any at all. The 12 of Ryan Blaney, service already complete. Blaney, a little bit on the tight side, uh, I'm sorry, on the free side. They made two different changes trying to tighten him up. We say we dial up our stage two winner, Ryan Blaney. Hey, Ryan, this is Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? Well, congrats on that stage two win. Man, it's been a wild race. It's certainly been a very entertaining from up here. Uh, tell us about how it's going for you guys down there. I know uh, congrats on that stage. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely been a wild race, so I'm, I'm really happy. I know probably the fans, you guys are happy. We're not just training up top. You know, it seems like the bottom is, is really, really fast. Um, and the lanes, they, they keep kind of switching. You know, sometimes the top will pull away five car links like in this stage and then the bottom came right back so uh, it's been a really exciting race we've kind of had to go from the back to the front now we're at the back again so i think our menard is being for mustangs pretty fast hopefully we can get our way through there we got brad behind us so try to uh, team up and see what we can do here the next little bit oh we're definitely enjoying it and i'm sure the fans are at home have a good one the rest of the way thank you all Ryan Blaney, stage winner for stage two.
76 laps to go in the 2019 Daytona 500. Kyle Busch in a Toyota, Ryan Blaney in a Ford are our two stage winners. Now we run to the checkered flag. And in seven of the last 10 Daytona 500s, the race winner had not yet led the Daytona 500. Tune into The Simpsons tonight on Fox at 8, 7 Central for a special sneak peek of the new movie Fighting With My Family from Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Paige, who is featured in that movie, and the rest of the WWE family will join us on the Fox Sports family this fall. WWE SmackDown moves to Fox Friday nights beginning October 4th. Well, we're about to have a SmackDown in these final 75 laps of the Daytona 500. We still have 30 cars on the lead lap. Now the nine cars in front did not pit under this caution flag for the end of stage two. Getting ready for the restart. Here's our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Win your battles, earn your name. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Pole sitter William Byron in a Chevrolet with Eric Almarola's Ford out front. Stenhouse, Harvick, Suarez in Fords, Jimmy Johnson, Chevy, Logano and Boyer in Mustangs, Chase Elliott in a Camaro, Matt DiBenedetto in a Toyota. That's your top ten through the restart zone and green flag. I think William Byron might be getting uh, ganged up on here by the Fords. <laughs> Yeah, you got that whole inside lane there, Daryl, of Fords, plus the four of Kevin Harvick on the outside. But you got Jimmy Johnson, Chase Elliott back there. They can help. Johnson in the 48, just two cars behind Byron, if he can get there to help his Chevrolet teammate. Yeah, you got Kevin Harvick behind the Byron, and that's a pretty good shove Boy, right look there. Look at it's that run. Chevy, William Byron Chevy right out front. Nice move. Well, don't forget, our pole setter, his car has shown the most speed in any of our practice sessions. Now it's all about getting some help as well as having a good handling car. Being out front definitely will help all of those things. That fresh air, man, when you're in front, you get the most down. Everything is working perfect when you're out front. Our stage winner, Ryan Blaney, is back in 12. Remember, he was one of the cars that pitted, that bright yellow and blue car in the outside lane. His crew just tweeted a picture of the $5 bill they found stuck to the grill when the car came in for the pit stop. <laughs> now, if that's not a lucky charm, <laughs> sure beats a lucky penny. Oh, yeah, I'd take the five bucks. Really beats a hot dog wrapper. No kidding. <laughs> or a hot dog shooting out of a bun. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> side by side for the lead. I don't know if you know it or not, but the finish is going to look a lot like this when we get down to it because these guys running this close together side by side. No lane seems to have an advantage. I think we heard uh, Blaney say one time you think the top is pretty good, then you think the bottom is pretty good. It's really moving back and forth. I, I just go back to the beginning of this race, and I think young William Byron, he went to school a little bit. We talked about that, that he might do that. He wasn't side drafting that inside lane the first time. They shuffled him out. Now this time he did side draft. Off of Eric Amarola, takes the lead. Race fans, instead of going to a commercial break, we're going to take you Toyota all out. Riding along here with Eric Jones, winner here at Daytona last July. Jones in 14th. I, I, Six I, I on the think, inside. But the Benedetto is, is, is continues to impress. I mean, he's running in the top ten right now. He's running eighth. And he is hanging there with the veterans and everybody. He's doing a heck of a job. Vince? Well, and their pit crew has done a phenomenal job as well. Rock solid again on that last stop. Now, they took left side tires only on that stop along with gas. They're going to have one more stop to make. And I talked with Mike Wheeler, the crew chief. He said, we're only going to need one can of fuel on that final stop. So we'll only want to take two tires. So we took left sides this time. If it all works according to plan, we take right sides with one can of fuel on the final stop. And hopefully that'll get us where we need to be. 
Kyle Busch in the top 10. There's Denny Hamlin who rebounded 15th right now. Hamlin had the benefit of being just in front of the leader when the caution flag came and, out. And remember, on the lead they're line. having some issues on pit road getting that car full of fuel. We, we'll try to find out if they got it full on that last pit stop. Wow, look at that 21 car. Of well, you see Mark Church Jr. getting shuffled back on the outside lane. Paul Menard just shot right by him. And we're going to take you side by side. Super cool to have Super back. The Toyota. Super next Saturday in Atlanta in the Xfinity Series and thanks to Toyota for that all out competition segment. William Byron has his hands full with Kevin Harvick but Byron's teammate that Hendrick Chevy Jimmy Johnson is trying to get up there on the outside to help. Yeah I thought Byron got a little bit of a lead off of two there it looked like he got way out in front of the pack but uh, that that Chevy right now that thing is running pretty fast he's a, he's working both sides of the street and keeping them all behind him. Kevin Harvick in second. Time for our final Bush car to can trivia question for a chance for you to win a special edition Bush can made from Kevin Harvick's number four car. At what racetrack did Kevin Harvick win his first race with Bush as his primary sponsor? Tweet your answer using hashtag car to can and hashtag Bush contest. Mike, I tell you something else is happening. It's 515. The track's cooling down. Some of the track's starting to get a little shade on it. That's going to change the way these cars handle. That could be a benefit to some of these guys have been struggling with handling problems. Might be a benefit to some of these fellows who just got tires. Could be. Could be. It could work in your favor for sure. Put Ryan Blaney in that group. I mean, I think now, to me, it's all about what's going to happen in this final stage. Four tires, the most fuel you can get. It's only going to help you put less fuel, fuel in it on your next stop. Regan? Well, guys, right before that last caution, we saw the number four car and the number 17 car of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. lined up with Kevin Harvick. There was some smoke coming out of one of those cars from steam out of the engine. It was the 17 car, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. They have, are not concerned about that. The temperatures came down, but the four car of Kevin Harvick also had the temperature spike right there. Something to look out for as this race gets to the end and things get dicier and closer. Well, as the temps cool down, that'll help that condition. But listen, the more tape, you can put on the grill of these cars and close up that opening the faster that thing will go and that's what they're trying to do. Here are your Simicorp biggest movers since the last restart. Ryan Newman up to 22nd. Tyler Reddick, David Reagan, Paul Menard, Ty Dillon. All those cars among the 30 who are on the lead lap. But Mike think about it. this is a 21 year old kid in that 24 car sat on the pole and he's driving like a veteran like he's done this his whole life. Well I'll be a, you know I'll let the four graph on me a little while then I'll go down maybe I'll let the ten draft. He's just really doing a sweet job. Nice job. He, cool. He's a great student. He really retains a lot of information and I think he's really been learning over the last year and all weekend uh, all week that we've been down here for speed weeks. A junior at Liberty University he'll be back in class tomorrow morning unless he's celebrating a Daytona 500 victory.
62 laps to go in the Daytona 500. Here's how the Coca-Cola family of drivers is faring. Daniel Suarez and Joey Logano both in the top 10. Logano's led 11 laps today. Denny Hamlin right up there in the midst of the lead lap, as is Kyle Larson, Ryan Newman, and last year's winner, Austin Dillon. Still on the lead lap here. Six years ago, William Byron, the race leader, had never sat in a race car. He had spent several years sitting at home in front of his computer on iRacing. His dad said, you want to try this for real? You bet I do. They took him to the little quarter mile at Charlotte Motor Speedway, put him in a Legends car. He started winning right away. And then he island hop NASCAR's ladder to the top. One year in the K&N Series, Rookie of the Year and Champion. One year in the Truck Series, Rookie of the Year. One year in the Xfinity Series, Rookie of the Year and Champion. Last year, Rookie of the Year in the Cup Series, and now he's trying to win the Daytona 500. Six short years. What a career. Uh, and Mike, oh, I, boy, that was just that's threading a needle for Clint Boyer. Just dropped down in front of the 22 car. I thought for sure that was going to turn him around. Getting a little dicey right there. But you know what? There's two guys that I think have old souls. William Byron's one of them, and uh, Ryan Blaney's the other. They're, they're so, they have so much more experience than their age than, than their age should allow them to have. And I think it's growing up in a racing family that helps them. Watch the 14 here. Yeah, let's see. Clint Boyer's on the top, gets a Ooh. big run, goes to the outside, side drafts. Logano, he gets a little bit loose. He sees himself coming up on the 48. He's got to get down. Wow. I don't think he had any idea just how much, how little of a gap there was to shoot down from the 22. And Boyer hit 202 miles an hour during that move. Yeah, well, that's the temps are cooling down. The track's cooling down. The cars are picking up speed. Guess what that means? They're harder to drive when they go fast. Like, the fast they go, the harder they are to drive. And the tempers are going short. <laughs> yeah, I think if William Byron's going to continue to lead this race. He's going to have to battle with Stenhouse. Stenhouse, not a guy that's content by being back there a few rows back. He's been making some big, bold moves. And Mike, this is mentally exhausting. You're, you're, you're constantly making decisions, and you're man, you, you never get a chance to rest. Physically, maybe your mus muscles aren't giving out, but your brain is constantly working, thinking about my next move, anticipating. Now, in William Byron's mirror, his boyhood hero. Jimmy Johnson. And Jimmy Johnson almost was clear of Kevin Harvick there. Chose not to really risk it at that time. Probably a smart move at this point in the race, but closes up on the rear bumper of the 24 of William Byron, his teammate. That outside line is pretty steamy right now. Harvick trying to tow Matt DiBenedetto up to the front. With William Byron leading the Daytona 500 with 58 laps to go from his teammate, Jimmy Johnson. Until my car has
The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by McDonald's Classics, now with bacon for a limited time only. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR, perfect for race fans. 54 laps to go. In the Daytona 500, Jimmy Johnson, new sponsor, new crew chief, didn't win a race last year. He is side by side with his young teammate for the lead. Let's have a look at today's Credit One Bank ones to watch. Jeff? While this great battle is going on up front, somebody's lurking back there in seventh position. Kyle Busch, this is his 14th attempt. He's never won the Daytona 500, but he's won everything else. Is today the day? Jeff, Jimmy Johnson comes to Daytona, I think, motivated more than any driver in the field. It's been 59 races since he won a points race. The question was who would win first, Chad Knauss or Jimmy Johnson? My money's on 07 time. Let me put this in perspective for you. Mike Wheeler is Matt DiBenedetto's crew chief. The first time that Denny Hamlin and Mike Wheeler went to victory lane was right here at Daytona a couple of years ago. Keep an eye on that underachiever because he's doing a great job today, Matt DiBenedetto. Last week, Kevin Harvick's crew chief Rodney Childers had the right pit strategy to win the clash. They didn't take advantage of that and put him out front. He told me today he'd keep that car out front all day like he has already. Kevin's a previous Daytona 500 champion. Watch him. Mike? Joey Logano had the winning move on the last lap here Thursday night. He's finished in the top six in the last four 500s, including his victory in 2015. And that's your Credit One Bank ones to watch with 52 laps to go. You know, Mike, I was thinking back to Roger Penske on our pre-race show, and Roger has a saying, you have to exceed expectations to be successful. I believe Matt DiBenedetto is exceeding expectations, and I believe he's going to be successful. Here's some Clint Boyer audio, car 14. That's the end of the race. Man, we talked about it. Just keep digging here. Yeah, what, what Clint Boyer's talking about, they came up on a slower car. And when you're running side by side like this, tires are starting to get worn, fuel levels are going away, you're in a heated battle. The last thing you want is to have to go three wide in the middle of the corner around one of these slower cars. And, and Mike, I'm serious when I tell you, it's all mental. It's not physical. This place does not wear you out physically, but it wears you out mentally. And as the race comes down near the end, you've got to be able to control your emotions. You get upset about something now, and it's not going to do you a darn bit of good. It's going to cost you a win. 50 laps to go. Only five of the last 20 years has the leader with 50 laps to go won the 500. We'll go side by side.
No, two of them. It's two of them. Next week, we load up and head to Atlanta Motor Speedway. The Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 is next Sunday, February 24th. Coverage 1230 Eastern on FS1 continues at 1.30 p.m. on Fox. Ed Clark and his folks have a fair weather guarantee, so go ahead and buy your tickets, and we'll see you in Atlanta next weekend. Mike, I expect to see the same kind of racing next week with all the new aero package and everything. Here's your progressive race summary. 47 to go. Seven different leaders, still 30 cars on the lead lap. 11 lead changes. Five cautions for 18 laps. Matt Benedetto has led 49, and William Byron has now led 35 laps, second most. Larry? Yeah, when I look at nine cars that are out there that pitted on lap 108, which includes the top six cars, they're going to have to come here in the next two to three laps, which will be somewhere around 40 to 45 to go. Now, the drivers that pitted at lap 122, which would include Matt DiBenedetto, they can go about another 10 or 12 laps. They'll have to pit somewhere around 35 to go, but expect William Byron and the top five or six to be in over the next two to three laps. We listened in on Team 24's strategy. Let's see real well. Off the floor with the side, just going to have to help me there. Yep, how you just did is exactly perfect. You're cool. That's how, it, that sun may, uh, it'll bother you for very, it won't last long because the sun will go down, that'll go away. But boy, when it, it's in your eyes, you're literally blinded. What I'd be telling William Byron right now, don't worry about what's on your windshield, just pay attention to your mirror. So you're going to see right here, I mean, right there just for an instant. It's kind of hard to see where you're going. That'll go away pretty quick. Within the next three to four minutes, that sun will drop behind the grandstand. Not be a factor. Whoa. Trying to get on to oh. big road and kablam. What Brendan Gaughan gets run into by Austin Dillon. Obviously, Brendan Gaughan thought he was speeding in that first segment, decided to get on the brakes. Jamie? Well, that was miscommunication for Austin Dillon's camp. They told him, pit now, pit now. And then as soon as he tried to get down, he was blocked. And Danny Stockman said, no, stay out, stay out. Well, he had already committed. So now he has that right front damage. A fuel only stop for last year's Daytona 500 winner. Not much damage to the front of that car. I'm surprised. Ty Dillon and Kurt Busch also on pit road then as they finish up service on the 62. No takers this time. I don't know, Mike. I'm trying to figure out who's got the best car, who's sitting there and, you know, holding a little something back. We saw Joey Logano do that in his qualifying race. But that 24 car has been able to drag these guys around here pretty good without anybody really challenging him. Well, let me remind you, only one driver has led this race today who has won the Daytona 500. Driver 22, Joey Logano. He's been out front for 11 laps, so... He's got a fast car, but I don't know if he can get by all these cats get to the lead or not. Oh, this thing's anything but over. There's a lot of racing still left to go here. 43 laps to go. Here's a quick word from Duracell. This. Single file breakout as they work lap traffic. And Mike Eight cars have in single file before the pack. And, and what I see, you see William Byrne here. He's leading in a Chevrolet, but behind him, Johnson is fourth in a Chevrolet, and the rest of them are Fords. All the Fords at the front of the field right now. Coming to 41 laps to go. Want to peel off early if you're coming, and some of them are. Boy, a bunch of them did, but not our leader. Whoa! Car goes around in the trial. The spin oh. sliding out of control. B.J. McLeod brings out the caution. Stenhouse has wrecked on pit road with Tyler Reddick. Another yeah. car is sitting littered in the grass. And we're under caution. That is the 52. That's Cody Ware. I think Reddick got the left rear tire of Jimmy Johnson. Then Jimmy couldn't get in his pit stall. I th that's one of the most difficult things in the world to do is running 200 miles an hour and try to get on pit road under green conditions. You can see Stenhouse too close to the pit wall. I don't know if they're going to even be able to get the left side up on that car.
Tyler Reddick out of the Xfinity Series involved in that. We're going to watch the red number 52 of Cody Ware and B.J. McLeod in the 51 coming into frame here at the top. And there's Tyler Reddick. Oh, All ooh, of them in their ooh. first 500 start and yeah. moves on. Yeah, and I just wonder if McLeod was trying to, to, to get woed up. And I think Cody Ware had no idea he was coming to pit road. And you're right, Jimmy Johnson did get collected in that. <laughs> Three drivers, Daytona 500 rookies get piled up here. Yeah, again, Cody Ware just right on the rear bumper of the 51 of McLeod. It, it, it just, just got in the back of him and turned him into that group. That took the whole left rear quarter panel off Jimmy Johnson's car. And these are cars that are slowing down, watch, trying to get a pit road. 48 there at the bottom. Yeah, here comes his Tyler car. Reddick gets turned sideways. His right rear quarter panel. Man, what an incredible shot seeing the debris. You can see the rear bumper of the 48 is stuck yeah. in the deck lid of that. Reddick's car 31. came into Johnson's like a cheese grater and just took the whole. Look what's left. There you yeah, go. And, they're and, not going. I mean, this is big trouble because they're going to have a hard time putting fuel in it. They've got to make those repairs. Um, that's pretty heavy damage. DJ McLeod picks up a bunch of turf, and because of the position of the stopped cars, pit road is going to remain closed here for this. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Geico, official partner of NASCAR. Bad day for Rick Ware Racing. Rick's son Cody in the 52 and B.J. McLeod in the 51. There's the 24. William Byron staying out and everything is nice and orderly now coming to pit road. Until cars further back, Ware and McLeod tangle. They collect Reddick in the white and green car. He slams into Jimmy Johnson. And four cars are wrecked. Really unfortunate. Third I'm still trying to figure out where the miscommunication is between the 48 of Jimmy Johnson and the 24 our leader, William Byron. You would have thought they would have pitted together right there. Oh, my gosh. That's a big hit to the 48. Look at that, comes all the way up and gets into the rear bumper of the 17 and into the side of Stenhouse. Larry Mack, there is so much missing on the left rear of Jimmy Johnson's number 48. What can they do? 
Well, it's, it's going to be a mess, Mike, because we've been looking at it on our different cam camera angles, and their biggest issue is I don't see how in the world they're going to get fuel in that car. That's the biggest thing they're going to have to work on. Remember, they can't replace the quarter panel based on the damaged vehicle policy, but they've got to get that fuel receptacle up there where they can get fuel in it. You can see that the spoiler is knocked uh, forward on the left side here. A lot of damage. Larry, it looks to me like the dry brake receptacle for the fuel is still there. Yeah, it's hanging at an odd angle, but could they fuel it like that? Yeah, it's going to have to be s supported, Mike, because that's a lot of pressure when you try to engage that fuel can. You uh, can see him doing you it know, right here, You know, what's going to be interesting here, what, what's going to be, and you saw right there, I think somebody was actually holding it while he was trying to engage that can. What's going to be interesting with the strategy here, remember what I said at the top of the show, strategy by the crew chief to get your driver up front. Everybody has to pit here. I think you want four tires, but don't be a bit surprised to possibly see some two tire stops. Thanks, Larry. Now to answer Jeff's question, let's uh, we listened in on William Byron's team. Keep it out on the 17. He might be pitting. Come on, too late. Do two fingers out the window, coming to pit road, but he didn't do a full wave, so I didn't think he was coming. Well, they were keeping it secret, and that's why they got ran over from behind. Nobody knew. Now, so what I wonder about this is I believe the 48 wanted to come with the 17 and pit together, but I don't know how William Byron is supposed to see all that happen off of turn four. That is such a difficult call to make. If you, I don't care how experienced you are. To make that call and try to see somebody put a hand out the window behind you, that needs to be communicated among spotters and as well as on pit road. Yeah, he's the leader of the race. They're going to get this car back out if it's not leaking fuel from that dry brake apparatus. Pit road is open for the leaders, and here they come. Regan? Kevin Harvick only had one request. He said, all I want is track position for my race car and a quick pit stop. Vince? The 95 of Matt Benedetto. he's led the most laps today. He's pitting from third. Everything is fine. He says it'll be just right sides and gas to the end for 95. Jamie? Kyle Busch led 29 laps today. He's a little bit loose in the three. Otherwise, good fast stop, Matt. The 24 is in. They are going to go for four tires. Top him off with fuel. The 18, the 11, the 88, and the 12 all going by. A little bit of trouble on the left rear, finally away. A lot Whoa. of trouble. Who said Kyle Busch was one to watch? Yo, well, well that may remember, have been we me. know he has <laughs> the best pit crew on pit road. They've proven it time and time again. They just prove it right here. I told you he was lurking. A lot of damage, but still a lot of cars contending to win the Daytona 500.
After eight wild weeks, it's the Masked Singer semifinals. Get ready for emotional performances, and for the first time ever, two celebrities are unmasked. Find out who on the Masked Singer Wednesday on Fox. You know, I think Jeff's going to. I think Jeff's going to go on that show. I thought you were already. Oh, no, you told me you could monster? karaoke. You said you were really good at karaoke. I did not say that. I said I did karaoke. Oh, you did karaoke. Okay. Wasn't good at it. You saw that scowl on Martin Truex's face. Too fast entering on pit road. So was Ryan Newman and Austin Dillon. Had too many men over the wall. The defending champion of the Daytona 500. And here's a little Daytona 500 radioactive. 500 miles, 40 drivers over 200 miles an hour. There'll only be one guy fulfilling a dream at the end of it. All right, I love you. Love you, buddy. Have fun. Yes, sir. You know how to do it. I'll do you proud. So I look for these veterans to pounce and take these young kids to school early on in this Daytona 500. Yes, sir. I got you there, Pop Pop. Hey, buddy. Have a good day out there. You know what else to do. Guys, take care of on pit road. Let's be solid. No mistake. Five, four, three, two, one. We're in green flag, green flag. They're going to damn wreck again before the end of the stage. Caution's out. Caution's out. And then here, just watch the one. They're crashing up here. Back it down. Back it down. I couldn't freaking stop, but I'm all good. Yeah, I didn't hit nothing. Did a 360 to miss a job right there. I was worried you was going to get out on the grass. I tried to stay out of it because I knew it was going to roll the nose under. We're all good. We didn't do nothing. Radioactive is my favorite feature on NASCAR Race Hub. Weekdays, 6 p.m. on FS1. Every Tuesday, Radioactive. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and every <laughs> Tuesday, I say, wow, did you hear that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Johnson getting a penalty on pit road. Yeah, what happens is the fueler is only allowed to fuel the car. And I believe what I heard was that the fueler fueled the car, went back, grabbed some tape or something to work on the car. Can't do that. So uh, Jimmy Johnson being held on pit road. Let's check with Regan. Guys, a quick call by Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s crew chief, Brian Patty, to back him up. After that car got hit, he was going to pull back on the racetrack. They backed him up, serviced that race car, very minimal damage to his car. That's how he ended up with all this track position just now is by Brian Patty being really quick. William Byron led 44 laps today, but he comes out 18th after a long stop. Now ready to go. Michael McDowell in a front row motorsports Ford. That team uh, has moved out of Statesville, North Carolina, down closer to the hub of NASCAR in Charlotte for larger facilities because they've expanded to a three car team this year with Matt Tift. But here's the Glendale, Arizona native up front with Jamie McMurray in a one off ride for Spire Motorsports slash Chip Ganassi Racing, a damaged car, as Jamie's talked about throughout the telecast and pre race. Next week, he trades his fire suit for a business suit and joins our NASCAR team at Fox Sports. Oh, he's Guys, a great addition, great uh, addition. You want to know how McDowell got this lead? He was the one that survived getting on pit road, got on pit road before the caution came out, did his four-tire stop, and all that carnage that was going on around him, now he's the leader. First time he's ever led the 500. He's a good been restrictor a, plate racer. Been a tough day for Kurt Busch. He's 11 laps off the pace, but he's done a great thing we want to tell you about. This season, Kurt has partnered with the Veterans Ticket Foundation to form the KB100 Ticket Giveaway. Kurt is paying for and giving away 100 tickets to every NASCAR race this season to current and former military members. For more information, visit vettix.org. There were 3,200 requests for the 100 tickets for the Daytona 500, and Watkins Glen International has already stepped up and said they will add 100 tickets to Kurt's 100. What a, a grand gesture. Agree. Oh, maybe the 34 McDowell did not cross the line before they shut the uh, pit road. We thought he was the leader. I know he was on pit road, but maybe that caution came out just before he crossed the line. We've had a couple of top 10 finishes in the 500. I don't think this is going to help him any, though. So both Michael McDowell and Ricky Stenhouse are uh, moving Stenhouse, to the back for that yeah. reason. So McMurray actually came into pit, I believe, the lap before all that carnage happened, and that's why he's the leader. Jeff, Lights that's exactly what happened. He pitted at lap 158, and we're looking right now. Michael McDowell, he did not make the light entering pit road. It was red when he got to the line. Thank you, Larry. 
Going green this time. Now It'll we, be 33 to go. Listen, this is going to be a penalty to somebody. I don't know who they're going to give to. I saw an Xfinity race yesterday. When they came to the line like this, they were penalized. There must be two by two lined up on restarts. Oh, you're supposed to be anyway. <laughs> yeah, that was not a good move by somebody. I think must have been the nine the way it looks. Look at the damage on the right front of that number 40 of Jamie McMurray. Can you believe he's leading the Daytona 500 with that? No, I can't, but I, I, I don't know if he's going to stay there for I, I long. Say, I don't think he'll lead it long, Mike. That's a lot of damage, and he can follow pretty good, but it'd be hard to be out front. But wouldn't yourself. that be something? His final race here in the Daytona 500. He's won this race before. He knows how to draft, but he's got a lot of damage. If that damage doesn't hold him back too much, he might stay there. Well, he can't see that damage from the driver's seat. And it's not <laughs> no, slowing him down. Mike, this race right now with just a few laps to go, not that far, is going to get wild and crazy. Three wide mid-pack on back. We haven't seen three wide all day. What do we got? Three wide. So much for single file. Look at DeBenedetto. Or, uh, yeah, DeBenedetto. Uh, DeBenedetto up on the outside there making a move around the Blaney in the 12. 32 laps to go. It's time to go. Oh, yeah. That's I-95 that runs alongside the track, and number 95 is up there in the highway. That was my first number, 95. I just thought about that. The rest NASCAR has ruled the restart as no penalty. Okay. Well, that's good news for somebody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know who, but. Boy, this, I'll tell you guys, this is when it gets nerve wracking right here. You feel the vice tightening, don't oh, you? Oh, man. Danny Hamlin, oh. nice side draft. Off the quarter panel, Jamie McMurray shoots out to the lead. Blaney in the middle in the 12. He's got help from Menard and Joey Logano, uh, three his wide teammate. in the inside, Kyle Busch. Here I come. Sort of caught McMurray sleeping there just a little bit. Got a great push from his teammate, Eric Jones, behind him. And as soon as you say nobody will go there, look for Kyle Busch. <laughs> He's one of your Toyota top performers, Denny Hamlin, the leader. And we haven't talked about Alex Bowman, but where did he come from? There he is up there in second, right behind Denny Hamlin. Yeah, Bowman was way back like 15, 16 there for a long, long time. Denny Hamlin did not win a race last year. He won the 500 in 16, beating Martin Truex to the line by a few inches. Made a change with the crew chief, going to Chris Gabehart. As we talked with Mike Wheeler, going over to Benedetto. So, you know, they, there's a lot of pressure Ooh. on Denny Hamlin right now. Ooh. Wouldn't that be something if you get back into victory lane and it be in the Daytona 500? I think it'd be something right now if you just finish the Daytona 500. These guys are getting, wow, man, they're getting crazy, moving. Wow. Bowman, that was a quick move, an abrupt move. But you know what? I don't think I've been to a restrictor plate lately that somewhere, some way, somehow, Denny Hamlin wasn't a factor. He's pretty darn good on these restrictor plate tracks. Well, this will be the final restrictor plate race in this NASCAR era. Beginning at Atlanta next week, we move to the tapered spacer engine package, and things will be different. Mike, I just saw 8,500 on the tack. That's probably at least two to 300 more RPM, and I think I've seen all day. The temps have cooled down, the tracks cooled down. These cars are flying and right these, now. And the drivers are a lot more aggressive right now. We're seeing a lot more three wide. We're seeing some big moves pushing one another. That track temps come down, like you said, DW, and the track has a lot of grip right now and allowing these drivers to be far more aggressive. Yeah, I think there's some urgency now. I mean, we've got 28, 29 laps to go. Bowman, Bowman to the to outside. I, but he's going to kind of, this might backfire on him because Denny Hamlin's teammate there, two teammates actually on the Three inside teammates. lane. Here comes William Byron back up on the inside of his teammate, Alex Bowman. That's the 24 to the 48. That 24, I tell you, he's fast, really fast. Could be the Flames, that Sam Bass design <laughs> paint job that carried uh, Jeff Gordon and now it, Alex Bowman, or a, now uh, William Byron's. It's a great looking race car, Mike, but it could be Chad Ganaus, too. But of course, got to get a lot of credit to that driver behind the wheel. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Hang on to them, guys. I mean, these cars have got to be driving pretty darn Caution. good. 
is on the speedway. Debris on the back straightaway. And probably just in time. No, I, we can catch our breath. <laughs> yeah. Lap 174. 26 laps to go. First debris caution of the day. And there's our Fox Sports drone across the back stretch. So much of that runoff area now paved. Yeah. That's a, a safe for safety reason so those cars can slide. Mercy. You catching your breath? Mercy. Oh, 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 oh. What a cool shot from that drone. Full moon on Saturday nights at short tracks. That's a bad omen. It usually leads to a lot of crashing and things. I don't think it has an effect on super speed. Oh, I, I, I don't th think. I think it might. I think it just <laughs> might. Everybody gets to catch their breath. <laughs> All week long, the story has been for Joey Logano's got everybody whipped. He's got the fastest cars. The Penske cars are the cars to beat. The Fords will get together. They'll all run up front. And what's happened? The Hendrick Chevrolets and the Joe Gibbs Toyotas formed a temporary alliance to run together in the early part of this race. Remember when Joe Gibbs started his race team? Who did he go for for advice for how to do that? Rick Hendrick. Well, that's all kind of coming back together today. If you had to pick a Toyota, a Ford, or a Chevy to win this race, I couldn't pick among the three of them. No, I couldn't either. But you know what? No one know, go, knows what goes on behind closed doors. <laughs> and I got to think that the Hendrick boys and the Gibbs boys might have gotten together sometime last night or this morning and said, look, we got to do something. Those Fords are ganging up on us, so let's work together and see if we can get a result. Yeah, well, but we're getting so inside of 30 laps to go. <laughs> and I think what you said, Mike, temporary. <laughs> I think, temporary. I think that that alliance is temporary, but it's certainly been working out great for them so far. All right, we're going to open pit road under this caution flag for debris. There it is on the back straightaway. Well, Larry, does this change everything? It, it really doesn't, Mike. We got 29 drivers on the lead lap, and there's no way. Remember what I said at the top of the show, track position, track position. And that's exactly what Cup rookie crew chief Chris Gabehart did with Denny Hamlin. He got fuel only that last trip to pit road. Maybe if you're on back there, say 15th or lower, yeah, come get four fresh tires. But you know what? For the guys up front, your bet is made. You might as well pack the pit equipment up. Well, drivers, you want tires or track position? Well, right now I'll take track position because I think it's so critical. I think tires, that factor went away when the track cooled down. I think the tires on the cars are good enough to, to win this race with. So you got to have track position. That's the key. Joey Logano's coming along with Ryan Priest. Chase Elliott, Reddick. Six cars on to pit road. Add McLeod and Kligerman to that list. And still 30 cars on the lead lap. We're going to take you double wide for pit stops. We're under caution in Daytona.
three Toyotas, leading two Chevys, leading four Fords, with just 24 laps to go in the Daytona 500. Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch out front. It has been an eventful day, not a follow the leader day by any means. First caution, Corey LaJoy cut a tire at lap 20, then at lap 50. Ricky Stenhouse may or may not have touched the number one of Kurt Busch, but Busch went around collecting Bubba Wallace, Jamie McMurray, and Austin Dillon. At the end of stage one, lap 60, Kyle Busch picked up the stage win in his Toyota from Alex Bowman. Ryan Blaney for the second year in a row, the winner of stage two. And then both the Rick Ware cars crash into Tyler Reddick and Jimmy Johnson, causing a huge calamity at lap 160, tearing the left rear corner off of Johnson's car. Lap 174, caution for debris. And here we are ready to go green for the stretch run, which could be as many as 23 laps to the checkered flag. Oh, it could be. But, uh, <laughs> but Jeff and I were just talking about, I said, how many more cars do you think there will be? What do you think? Two? Well, they're just going to get more and more aggressive. In the biggest race of your career, the biggest race of the year, you see that trophy and checkered flag in your grasp, and we all know what happens when the horses start going for home. Leader is Hamlin in Toyota. The first Chevy is Byron in fourth. The first Ford is David Reagan in sixth place who picked up a sponsor for this race when he auctioned a car for charity out in Scottsdale at Barrett Jackson. We're back under green and from the outside. Looking for the lead, but the bottom lane has prevailed. And look at those four, three Toyotas hook up on the inside out front. Oh. Ooh. 14 of Boyer got Ooh. into the right rear. He almost turned David Reagan. David Reagan almost turned him. Great driving by David Reagan. Both drivers not to cause a big wreck right there. Reagan is, I, I tell you, he's really, really, really good on his, uh, on his restrictor plate tracks. He's actually won a couple of them. So he's not, a, he knows what he's doing. Bumper of Eric Jones on the inside. He's got Bowman with him. And well, I think the 20 has a problem. Eric Jones is fading. Yeah, the 24, William Byron got hung up behind the 20 there and it cost him a bunch of spots. Off the racing surface. No fuel, no, like still. no fuel pressure for Eric Jones. I straight to the pit. Tough break for the young Michigan driver. Watch that red and white 21. That's the Wood Brothers car. They've won the 500 oh, five God. times. Oh, as Paul gosh. Menard <sighs> tries to make something happen, but for the moment has no friends on the inside. Hey, I Fish tailing. Say, I was going to say, Paul, watch out for Jamie McMurray. He's coming by on the outside. Fish tailing off turn four. I, I, man. And right in the mix in sixth. Rookie. In the gold number eight for Richard Childress Racing, that team celebrating its golden anniversary. Daniel Hemrick won the Legends Million at Charlotte Motor Speedway to help propel his career. Got up to the Xfinity Series and now is called to the Cup Series, replacing Ryan Newman at RCR. Mike, look at this. Matt DiBenedetto is fifth. Hemrick is sixth. McDowell seventh. Newman, we haven't talked about Newman all day. He's eighth. There's Menard in 20 foot in the 21 ninth. I mean, those guys haven't been in a hunt all day, and here they are at the front of the field at the end of the day. We had talked about how William Byron was behind the 20 there of Eric Jones when he had his problem. Well, he was in third, fourth position all the way back now in 25th position. And look at this. We've been talking about this all week. They've been side by side all day long, but previous races single file in the top lane. Why did they choose 20 to go, DW, well, and now do it? Yeah, we're setting up for the finish. Crash! Uh-oh, uh -oh. Down, Kyle down, Larson. Down, wow. It's been a bad week <laughs> for Kyle <laughs> Larson. It hasn't been a good week at all. And there's two more cars coming. That car has just not been very competitive this week. Left rear up. 
Larson was running 18th. There was no contact with another car. Mike, I think he'd been hanging on that thing all day long. I don't know if anybody got into him or not, but it, it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't because he just hadn't had a very good car. So we can see what happened here. See Larson, I believe right in this area. Yeah, that's him. I think that they're either a tire Tires. started going. That looks to me like maybe a left rear tire started going down. Jeff, I saw tire debris out from behind the car as he went to the bottom lane. He was trying to get out of the way. Ooh, baby. I mean, honestly, for where that happened and what happened, he did a pretty nice <laughs> job of not tearing that car up a lot worse. Well, he's had a lot of practice today of almost almost spinning it out, so uh, that helped. Jimmy Johnson gets the free pass for the second time in a row. That Look at that left rear on Larson. Does that look down? It I think it down. is, because yeah, all the lettering's off of it. I think that's what he was doing. Yeah, and you see the car start to get loose right here, turn left, or uh, turn right. Obviously made contact with maybe somebody's right front fender or right side because that's why that Goodyear has gone off the left rear and ended up probably cutting the sidewall. Oh yeah, you can hear it come yeah. apart. Yeah. those pitting under this caution. Matt. Mike, they're going to work on the balance of the 24. You can see the adjustment handle on both sides. Significant crank on the right side, four tires. He dropped outside of the top 20, which you had documented. So a great opportunity to roll the dice, get fresh tires, and try to regroup. Eighth caution flag of the day. There are just 18 laps to go in the Daytona 500. Denny Hamlin is your leader. Field in the back straightaway, Daytona Beach Airport in the background. Aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear. Win your battles, earn your name. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. 
The last nine Daytona 500s have had nine different winners. McMurray, Bain, Kenseth, Johnson, Earnhardt, Logano, Hamlin, Bush, Dillon. The race record is 10, set from 2002 to 2011. The race leader at 20 to go has only won once in the last 20 Daytona 500s, and only four of the top 10 have won it. Mike, what, a, what an incredible day this would be if the 11 car should win this race. Uh, the tribute we paid to J.D. Gibbs when the race started. Denny Hamlin said he would give $111 for every lap he led today. He's led uh, 14 so far. Uh, so this could be an incredibly emotional day for Joe Gibbs. Back to green with 16 to go. I am surprised how that 40 car, Jamie McMurray on the outside over there, how he can even keep up with the pack with that fender flapping the way it is. Well, one way he's getting to stay up there is the aid of Daniel Hamrick giving him a nice shove down the back straightaway. But you got to believe the aerodynamics are hurting that 40 car. Got to be killing that thing. But Top you know, side, he was Logano one of our, uh, I'm sorry, Mike, he was one of our fastest cars in practice yesterday. Right. Remember, uh, uh, McMurray was. I think Joey Logano in that 22 is getting a little impatient. He was looking way up on the top side, trying to make it three wide. Here he goes again. Ryan Newman just ahead. Nothing up there. He might go to the middle. Oh, nothing there. Not much room. Boy, what a move by Joey Logano. His car stuck to the in racetrack the so good right there. The Ryan Priest with him. It's down. almost like he in suckered Ryan middle. Newman to go up there. The and he's a great move. through you're clear, you're clear. and no leaves wrong. McMurray. No that was his goal to get past that 40 of McMurray with the damage. 15 wow. laps to go, boys. All, all, all Logano needs right now is a place to go. If he can just find a little opening, he's going to stick that thing in there. But right now, he really doesn't have a lot of room to operate. One below the yellow line, but three, four wide, a little bit further back. I agree, Daryl, but he's got to get further up there, and he knows it. Look at this. He goes to the outside of Kevin Harvick. He needs some takers or somebody to go with him, though. He's not going to be able to do it by himself up there. Now, that double yellow line, that means no passing, just like on the highway. You cannot drop your left side tires below those two yellow stripes to advance your position, or you'll get penalized. And we saw this in the duels. As we watch Joey Logano. Now Kevin Harvick's going to go. Oh, oh trouble. Keselowski. Caution. Five back to the next group. Caution down. Mike, that looked like another left rear tire maybe uh, made contact and got the left rear tire knocked down. Ninth caution of the day. Team Penske's Brad Keselowski with 13 to go. Oh, boy. <laughs> Jamie? Well, Brad had left front damage earlier, but they thought they had cleared that. And now he said, I have no starter. You see him waving his hand, so he is stuck there right now. Cannot turn that car back on to get back to the pits. Another one of our past champions who's never won this race before, but Larry, one of the favorites going in. Larry, with the electronic engine management system in these cars, can Brad recycle that whole system and then try to restart it? He can, but it, it's a little tougher, easier said than done. But yes, you can recycle it and it will fire back up, but I don't know that that's gonna happen here, Mike. And what I did see also on a replay here, he was sideways when he came off turn four. Yeah, Larry, I believe he had a left rear tire down. It's what it looked like. Apparently, he made contact with someone and cut that left rear tire down. Yeah. See right here, it just. The banking saved him a little bit, at least kept him from getting into the outside wall. And he just loops it around, does a good job staying out of the wall and causing any more damage. They've got that car started up now. I think they pushed him off. 
It's his 10th try to win the 500. Brad Keselowski has been a champion of the sport, but has not conquered the 500 here at Daytona. See that left rear tire all the way down to the rim. Sparks flying. They got every flap on that thing up. Roof flaps, hood flaps. All of that designed to counter lift and make sure these cars stay on the ground when they get sideways to the wind at speed. It's a lot of rim rash right there. It is. 12 laps to go. 29 cars on the lead lap plus Eric Jones who will get the free pass. Mike, I dug out my 2019 race trend folder, and here's what I've got. If you look at the last 10 Daytona 500s, we're going to go back racing probably with about nine or 10 laps to go, but in the last 10 500s, the average of the last caution is lap 193 with seven to go, and in those 10 races, Mike, we've had four overtimes, including one year ago. 12 laps to go. And of the 100,000 fans that were in those stands at the start of the race, I don't see any empty ones. Nobody's leaving because they know what can happen on the last laps of the Daytona 500. I don't know why they bought a seat. They've been standing up ever <laughs> since the race started. I, I tell you, right here in front of us, these folks hardly ever sit down. They're resting right now, getting ready for a, an incredible finish. Next week in Atlanta, new engine package, new aerodynamic package for the cup cars. What will happen at Atlanta Motor Speedway next Sunday on Fox? We can't wait to find out. What a great display of what we have to look forward to in 2019. This has been one of the best Daytona 500s I've seen in quite a while, and it's not even over yet. And Mike, the aero package to reduce horsepower and everything they did to the cars, they believe, NASCAR believes, and I think the teams may even believe that we could see this kind of racing in Atlanta next week, pack racing. Let's check into the studio with Shannon Spake, Ricky and Bobby. <laughs> you love that, don't you, Mike? We love it, too. All right, so earlier in the show, I was talking to Ricky, and we were talking about the Fords and how strong they've been at plate races. But you said Toyota, and I said, don't you mean Ford? And you said, no, Toyota. This looks like yeah. it's turning out to be a prediction of yours. Yeah. yeah, the cars have been very, very stable on the bottom. Denny Hamlin has an instinct, a sixth sense of being able to lead the draft. Uh, obviously, Kyle Busch has bought into that. And then a newcomer into the equation would be Matt Benedetto. Now, he's going to line up fourth so he's going to either benefit Denny or Kyle based on which line Denny takes this is uh, sizing up to be Toyota against the rest yeah and I thought the Chevrolets were going to be up there William Byron and Alex Bowman William got in trouble when uh, Eric had fuel pressure problems so those guys are out of it but can they get back so I don't know can the Fords get back up there can the Chevys get back up there oh it's gonna get yeah. good Mike bring us home <laughs> here we go 11 to go right now They'll take the green at 10 to go, and in the last 12 Daytona 500s, the leader at 10 to go has won two of them. <laughs> Clint Boyer in the 14 running third. We listened in. Obviously, both lanes back there got good cars there, Brett. You're going to have to help me pick a, which the right one to be in, buddy. 10 for me. Talking to spotter Brett Griffin. And I think that's based on the uh, on the qualifying race we saw where he I felt like Brett Griffin didn't give it, uh, uh, Clint, Clint Boyer enough heads up when when Logano dove under him like he did. Denny Hamlin has chosen the outside lane against Kyle Busch for what could be the final restart. Green flag. That's rather optimistic, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> These guys wadded up like this. We're talking about the Daytona 500, the great American race. I don't think she's over yet, brother. Come on, D. It's not the Debbie Downer 500. Oh, no, no. It's going to be incredibly crazy. Yes. Denny Hamlin has to go up and put a block on Matt DiBenedetto to keep that Toyota behind him. Here comes Kyle Busch with a push from Boyer on the inside. Are you kidding me? This is big. Wow. But it... Boy, it just remind, reminds me of the class. Same type of carnage that we saw where these cars were going everywhere. A lot of damage as we, they all got to turn three. Well, that ruined everything. I, I, I mean... 
Sometimes I, I sometimes I'm speechless. I'm speechless. You know, there's just those feel good stories that build in a race. And boy, Matt De Benedetto was doing such an amazing oh, job. Oh man, I thought he was. So let's go to the Goodyear blimp as drivers climb out or try to make their way back to pit road. And look at the outside lane, De Benedetto and Paul Menard. Yeah, Paul Menard given a pretty nice push down the back straightaway to De Benedetto. Gets to his right rear. Oh yeah, that just starts to turn him yep. a little bit. Got him in the right rear. And then he collects yeah. Menard. Yeah. Logano just misses it, but the whole outside lane and half the inside pile up. And this is exactly what we were just talking about. At this stage in the race, you can start to taste victory in the Daytona 500. You want to see that checkered flag, and you'll do anything to get it, and you know you've got to be more aggressive with those bump drafts. That looks exactly like the clash. I mean, all those cars, third turn, all those cars wadded up, sliding up the track with sparks flying. It looks so much like the clash. That is the 17th of February, looking way too much like the 4th of July. Amen. Fireworks everywhere. Yeah, and it really and truly, it was uh, Paul Menard. He gave to Benedetto a, a little shove, but it was on the outside, on the right side, and that just turned the, the, the Benedetto into the in the outside wall, and then it was on from and, there. And a, a different situation than we saw in the clash between Menard and with Jimmy Johnson, but it was a similar thing when we heard the spotter on the 21 Menard say, "Well, he zigged, and we zagged." And in this case, Menard told his team on the radio, I just bumped him a little too hard. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? It's the end of the race. You're trying to help that guy. You're trying to help the Benedetto. You're not trying to wreck him, but uh, just bad bad judgment. Look at that oh. 10 car. Al Marola's number 10. Oh, look at David Reagan David underneath Reagan. the 10 of Al Marola. David Reagan, see what springs he's running. <laughs> look at that. All those sparks oh flying. Gosh. Man, amazing shots. And all Almirola wanted was a chance to win it on the last lap. Yeah. Well, didn't like quite, last year. Didn't quite get there. Close. And I got to believe our two leaders right now, Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin, were really wanting and hoping to have another Toyota there and De Benedetto to help them pull off this victory today. Going to be a little bit tougher for them to hold off those Fords, and some Chevys are moving up also. Amazing camera work by our Fox Sports crew. You're riding with Joey Logano. Just one too many pushes there, Mike, is what I saw. Kyle Larson. Well, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, here's Austin Dillon's view. Ouch. Martin Truex. Ooh. I was going to say, I'm not sure which list graphics is putting together the cars involved in the wreck or the cars that missed it. We'll find out when we come back. Huge pile up near the end of the Daytona 500.
dozen or more cars destroyed in the space of about six seconds. With less than 10 laps to go in the Daytona 500, a few still moving, but those cars pretty wounded. Now, William Byron has some left rear damage, but you'll see him snake through here in this shot from the Goodyear blimp. Way on the left, on the inside, that's our pole sitter. Sometimes it's an advantage to be way back like this. You get, get, a, get a second chance, maybe. See a little bit of a damage right here. He hits that car in front of him. I think it comes. Oh, the 20 of uh, Eric Jones comes back up. Must have clipped him. Uh, must have clipped him in the left rear to cause that left rear damage. But compared to all the others, all the drivers are out of the cars and are okay. You'll see Byron come into frame. Oh. Boy, De Benedetto just spinning around like a top there. Here comes William. Yep, dude. And you were right. Got a little left there. for a damage there. But all of his wheels are still headed in the right direction. Here are, in numerical order, the cars that are involved in the crash. This is just page, page one. one. <laughs> yeah, just page one. Man. Look at David Reagan's car on the rollback. What a mess. Look at that. It just goes on and on. 18 cars piled up. Goodness. I, I, but Mike, that's just a product of this kind of racing. I, I, I know we all love it. It's exciting. It's fun to watch. But if there's one little mistake, like Paul Menard made on pushing to Benedetto, just hit him just a little too hard and turn him in front of the whole field, and then yep. you get a bunch of cars wadded up like this. Once again, everybody is okay. Out of the cars and all right. Going to be checked out at the care center. There is David Reagan's car on the rollback. Let's go to the leader's pit and hear from the crew chief. Here's Vince. Well, and that's uh, the pit of Kyle Busch and with Adam Stevens, his crew chief. Wow, uh, it's, been a, it's been a solid day for you guys. Hasn't been too eventful, that's good news, but now getting ready for this restart with a bunch of Fords behind you, what do you expect? Yeah, you know, you expected the Fords to get up front sooner or later and we played the track position game well all day and made good adjustments. I have a pretty fast car, but uh, some respects it's kind of like the uh, back nine of the masters it doesn't begin uh, really until sunday and this race doesn't begin till 10 to go what do you think about partnering up with the other manufacturers when it has when it push comes to shove in the final laps uh i think once you get below 10 to go everybody's thinking about that checkered flag and all bets are off thanks adam matt clip boyer sits in the third position catch up with mike bugaravich well, for a while there, it looks like you guys were the odd man out, but you're sitting there with a bunch of your Ford corporate teammates, five in the, I think, the top seven. Yeah, it's a pleasant surprise. You know, our uh, Mobile One Rush Truck Center Mustang has been running good all weekend, really. We've been in position. It was looking kind of grim there for a while. A lot of Toyotas and stuff around us, not a lot of friends, but uh, it seemed to work out for us. Now we got our teammates behind us, so we got a shot at it. Uh, that's all we can ask for. Thanks, Buggy. Thank you. Well, they got a shot at it, all right. So under the red flag, the cars are parked as we await cleanup to be completed. That's pretty much a shot right there. <laughs> of, And you can even take out the 9 of Chase Elliott and the 24 of William Byron. Other than that, all those cars are the only ones that made it through with no damage, or very little anyway. Let's go to the care center and Regan. David Reagan, the first driver to emerge from the care center. First off, glad you're okay, David. From your viewpoint, you had a fast race car all day. You're a good plate racer. From your viewpoint, could you do anything there? 
No, uh, get to the bottom a little quicker. Uh, I messed around through one and two, and, and I thought Blaney was going to push me down the back straightaway, and he kind of bailed on me. And when they started reckoning in three and four, I saw it for a split second, and before I could even do anything, looks like I'm uh, underneath the 10 car there looking at his rear end housing. So, you know, that's just a product of these speedway races. It's the Daytona 500. You're going for the win. Can't thank our front row motorsports team, selectblinds.com. We had a fast race car. We were in contention. That's all you can hope for in those final 10 laps until all hell breaks loose. What was it like underneath that race car right there? I mean, you're completely under Eric Amarola's car. What could you see? Yeah, I can't thank NASCAR and the safety teams. You know, you hit a hard impact like that, and you're moving around. You see sparks. You see smoke, but you're still conscious and holding on. So going 200 miles an hour and stopping that fast with the concrete wall is not very fun, but uh, NASCAR and all their safety team do an incredible job keeping us safe so we can go to Atlanta Motor Speedway next week and do it again. Thanks, David. Thanks, Regan. David Reagan, one of those out of the race. 18 cars damaged. Not sure if all those are out of the race right now. With Coach Gibbs, here's Vince. Well, we often talk about the nerves of the driver or the crew chief, but how about the car owner as he sits here at Daytona and the top two cars belong to him? Yeah. And what are your thoughts, Coach? Well, my thoughts are I thought we were looking pretty good, and then we lost Eric, and then we lost Di Benedetto, and so now we got a lot of Fords sitting right there behind us. And so this is always, this is gut-wrenching, I'll put it that way. Uh, but hey, we got two veteran guys, Denny and Kyle, and I feel good about them. And we got FedEx and Mars Corporation up front. But what a great crowd today. I just, I just hope that somehow our two guys can stay together and we can pull this off. Well, you think they're going to tie at the end? I mean, you're going to have, even if one of them wins, obviously another is going to be disappointed. How do you handle that balance as team owner? It's always hard. I think when we leave the racetrack, when you have four cars, you know, there's three, three of them are not happy. So, uh, but that, that's also part of our sport, which I love. It takes teammates and it takes, actually, you got to have teamwork with four different cars when you come to the racetrack. I love the challenge of that, but it's hard. Thank you, Coach. Well, his cars right now are 1-2, Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin. Hey, look, he's a coach. He'll figure out a way to handle this. He'll smooth this over. That's right. Let's go back to Regan. Well, in his first race with Levine Family Racing, Matt Benedetto, you were putting on a show. You led 49 laps. We're having the run of your career, and then it all went bad on the backstretch there. What, what happened in the car? Just a race and deal, um, you know, not not any, anything intentional. I talked to Paul there. Just I think he was trying to get to my outside, clip my right rear. Just uh, just racing hard. So I uh, yeah, here's the first time that I've I've seen it there. Um, yeah, it looks like he just just barely got to my right rear. Just was trying to push, maybe get to my outside. But I was focused on trying to help my Toyota teammates. I hope they can uh, pull it off. But man, like you said, this was uh, I mean, it was the most fun speedway event I've ever had in my life being able to lead do some incredible things I have obviously an amazing team people can see what we're uh, doing here it's they need to be a part of Toyota have Procore as a sponsor I mean all these guys Levine family racing Toyota they all they all took a heck of a chance on me man and glad we uh, proved what we're here to do and I'm just uh, I'm very very heartbroken but appreciative to be here thank you so much to all the fans for all the support and we're uh, it's just the beginning so glad you're okay Matt we'll see you in Atlanta what a great run he had here today, and he ends up crashed. Uh, Kyle Bush, Mike Joy in the Fox Sports booth. You got a copy? Yes, sir, Mike. Well, we talked this morning, and you said you wanted to find some friends and get to the front and have a chance to win the 500, and here you are. It's you and Denny Hamlin against the world. How do you play this? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't It's uh. I tend to go, so it's any man's race. We just got to go out here and uh, figure out how we can make it ours. You know, the M&M Camry's been fast here all week long, and Adam and the boys have done an awesome job preparing it and working so hard all off-season long to get us to this position. And now it's a matter of myself and Hirschman going to work here and, uh, and bringing it home for everybody. Top lane, bottom lane, they both worked well today at different times. As it gets cooler, do you prefer one over the other? Um, not really, no. Um, I think you just kind of got to figure out what, what your gut says and, and go with it. All right, good luck these last nine laps. Thank you very much. Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, and then five Fords right behind them on the restart. Let's go back to Regan Smith. 
Well, strong speed weeks for Paul Menard. Unfortunately, both races that you were up front at the end, you end up on the rollback. Tell us what happened on the back straight away there with the bump draft and when it went wrong. Yeah, um, yeah, it was go time, and I was pushing a 95, and it looked like he was trying to get to the middle, and I, so I tried to get to the outside and just, just barely hooked him. Um, yeah, it wrecked a lot of cars, so that was uh, that was my bad. Um, wrecked a lot of cars. I feel bad about that. I fast forward. We saw you go over and apologize to Matt right away. He he obviously shook your hand. No no hard feelings between you guys. How disappointing is it though to have such fast race cars down here and nothing to show for it when the weekend's over? Yeah, I mean we uh, so many of Fords are fast this weekend, the entire weekend. Uh, we still have still have a couple of bullets there that can uh, try to try to pull it off. But we got separated. Uh, me and uh, the Penske cars and the SHR cars at one point. I sped on pit road. We got lapped down, had to battle back. But uh, we got separated. We weren't quite as uh, dominant as uh, as what our plan was. Obviously, plans always change. But uh, still got a couple bolts there to, to try to win it. Thanks, Paul. Menard trying to give the Wood Brothers their sixth Daytona 500 win, racing with heavy hearts after losing team and family patriarch Glenn Wood last month at the age of 92. Now, as we saw Joey Logano go by the crash scene, it looked as if he missed it, but we heard a little brush as if somebody got into the 22. You'll see him come into frame here from the right. Right Was there. Down on the apron. Right there, the right. Oh, yeah, the 17 just gets into his left rear. That's not too bad of damage. I, I think I he's mean, okay. He was the last one really through there I think without okay. any damage. Let's ride with him and listen to that right side and rear. Just heard a couple little kisses there. I don't, I don't, I don't think it hurt much. That might have been uh, the skirts on the side of the car down against the track apron. Yeah, you could hear him try to get to the apron. I think that actually the momentum took him up the racetrack a little more than he actually wanted to. Back to Regan. Daniel Suarez, another driver that was caught up in that wreck. Glad to see you okay, Daniel. You, you couldn't go anywhere, but is there any positives you can take from today as you go forward with your new race team at Stuart Haas Racing to Atlanta? Well, the car was fast. Uh, we're running in the top 10 pretty much um, the whole day. Uh, you know, challenge for the lead and uh, getting some stage points. Everything was going very well. Um, I mentioned in the radio many times that uh, one big wreck was going to happen, and I just wanted to make sure we're going to stay, you know, to stay out of it. Um, it's just difficult because with 10 laps to go, it's not like you just can hang out and, and wait for it. And it's time to go and. Unfortunately, we just got caught in someone else's mistake. Thanks, Daniel. Mike, I got to tell you, it looks more like a driver's meeting over here than it does a care center with so many drivers walking out right now. 18 cars involved in that crash. And NASCAR protocol is you must go to the care center and be checked over uh, and then released to TV and radio. Well, quite conciliatory here after the accident wasn't quite that way 40 years ago in the Daytona 500. <laughs> 1979, last lap. Cale Yarborough on the inside of Donnie Allison. Cale made the move to the inside. Donnie said, I would have given him the outside. They banged together up and into the wall and sliding back down to the grass. And from a mile and a half back came Richard Petty, Darrell Waltrip, and A.J. Foyt. Petty winning the 500. Bobby Allison stopped to check on his brother, jumped out of the car, and then it was on. The Allison brothers and Cale Yarborough in one of the wildest 500 finishes ever. That is a car Richard used in the 79 season to win the championship that year, though he did not drive it here at Daytona. There is the 89 winning car of Darrell Waltrip and the 1999 winning car of Jeff Gordon. Mike, I think that courtesy goes out the window on the last lap. <laughs> We're going to dial it, Clint Boyer. Hey, Clint, this is Jeff. Buddy, man, you got a lot of action going on there behind you, and you got two Toyotas in front of you. What's it going to take to get this Daytona 500 victory? Any suggestions? <laughs> <laughs> Go where they're, they ain't. <laughs> man, I don't know. Uh, Brett's been doing a good job. We've been, you know, having to get aggressive. Uh, when we lost that track position, I was really worried, but these Ford Mustangs have been strong. 
the whole speed week's down here. And uh, got a pile up behind me. It's got to manage this thing, right? Got two of the uh, the other guys there in front of us. Got to make quick work of them and hopefully uh, set sail. So you know what's coming when you do that. Well, I'll tell you what, you guys have been putting on a heck of a show. I don't know if I or any of us could have anticipated the side-by-side -side action and all the things going on. You guys have been in the front. You've been in the back. Uh, I mean, what do you expect to happen in these final nine laps? Well, I mean, you know you, these Toyotas are going to try to work together. But, uh, hey, there's a bunch of these Mustangs in rearview mirror. Got some allies there. Got a teammate back there with Kevin. Um, just happy this day has been good, man. It's been a hell of a good race. It's been fun. I'm telling you, these favors are slipping and sliding around. This is like the old Daytona, and I know your old bud would be pretty good at it, too. So I'm glad you're up there. <laughs> Uh, after seeing what just happened, so am I. <laughs> so am I. Hey, man, thanks for putting on a great show. Good luck to the finish. Thanks, bro. Clint Boyer will restart third on the inside. And I was wrong. The full moon affects Sunday night racing, too. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I was afraid that. What were you thinking, Mike, for doubting that? Last year, Eric Almarola won the Daytona 499, but a mile from the finish line, he got turned around into the wall by Austin Dillon, who went to victory lane. Al Marola crashed out of the Daytona 500 from behind. And tonight, an incident not of his making, collects the number 10 Stuart Haas Ford, sends it up in the air, down to rest and out of the race. Regan is with him. Well, turn three at Daytona has not been very kind to Eric Almarola. Eric, we saw, the, saw your car there going up into the air. We talked to David Reagan. He had the viewpoint from underneath your car. What was it like in your car, and did you think you were going over there? I did. Uh, for the split second, I thought I was going to go over. And uh, seeing the replay of the wreck, man, it has uh, a lot of resemblance of, of Kansas. But um, thankfully, walked away from that one. Uh, nothing hurts. Uh, everything's good. So. Just uh, a little disappointed, um, you know, our, our Smithfield Ford Mustang was good. Um, not as good as what we had at Talladega, um, but I thought we were good and just right there in the closing laps, every, the intensity ratcheted way up and there was a lot of big runs coming and pushing and shoving and uh, looks like the 95 um, got a little loose there getting into turn three and, and we all just got collected. So just kind of the product of uh, restrictor plate racing and this kind of stuff. When you run that many cars uh, that close together, when, when a wreck happens, we kind of all pile in there. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll pick ourselves up and uh, go to Atlanta. Our winner from Talladega a year ago, we'll have to wait for his next win. That young man's a championship caliber driver, needs just a little more luck. Someone will get to polish the Harley Earl trophy about nine laps from now, and then you can get all the wrap-up and recap on NASCAR Race Hub. This week on NASCAR Race Hub, the season is officially underway, and we're talking with the Daytona 500 champion. Plus, we have Jamie McMurray. Fresh Under the red flag here in Daytona with nine laps to go. Shannon, no shortage of subjects to talk about on Race Up this week. Uh, Mike, I said bring us home, but we're going to have to oh. pause that for a second, right? I mean, my goodness, we're going to have some of the guys, of course, that were just involved in that wreck uh, on Race Hub later this week. So we'll certainly be able to break down everything with them here with Ricky and Bobby or Bobby and Ricky, however you guys want to call it. We've got <laughs> Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin, right? They're out front. How do you guys play this if you're them? Oh, man, I, you know, I'd, I'd let the, uh, the two Toyotas get down on the bottom of the racetrack and race. Yeah, the, the racing is yeah. what we saw. And this is early on, right? We see the one of Kurt Busch get around by Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Did he tap him or did he not tap him? That was the question. It's a game of inches, and you can feel it as a driver. When, you, when another gets that close to you, the back of the car lifts. This is a little bit later when you start to see some muscle from the Toyotas, mm -hmm. Kyle Busch jumping out front. You've been on that Toyota bandwagon all race long, Ricky, and we saw them working with the Chevys early on. And then this, try slowing down from 200 miles an hour to 55. This is sometimes what's going to happen. And, and what was so bad about this is obviously Jimmy Johnson's had a great run all day. The Hendrick car has been fast. Gets tore up from behind. I've had this happen before. 
No, I just, man, it's just bad luck just follows him. That is where the fuel is supposed to go into the car, so that is not good. Then Kyle Larson, he spins. And really, it was kind of calm until the end of the race. I mean, calm in the fact that we saw two wide racing, three wide racing, but we didn't see a whole lot of carnage until, of course, this one. So we had to go. 90% of the race, the first 90%, you don't allow yourself to think about hoisting the Daytona 500 trophy. But with 20 laps to go, it sinks into your mind. I've got a chance at this. And the mentality becomes, if I lift, I lose. And that always gets you in trouble. We saw Paul Menard. Uh, you know, not lifting, doing what he should do as a driver, trying to win the great American race, and you saw the repercussions because of it. Yep. Mike, I think you jinxed us with that full moon uh, comment. Uh, let's try this again. How about that? I never would have shown you that. Artie Kepner, our director, <laughs> insisted we see the full moon. Oh, my gosh. Mm, awesome. All right, two Toyotas, five Fords, then a squadron of Chevrolet. 25-minute red flag. Now we're back under yellow, and in two laps we're going green. What happens next? Well, here's what I think is going to happen. Our leader, Kyle Busch, is probably going to start in that outside lane, get the jump on the start, try to get down in front of his teammate, Denny Hamlin, to get them nose to tail. If I'm Clint Boyer, I'm going to be pushing Denny Hamlin as hard as I can to try to prevent that from happening. Once that happens, then they're going to have to start to back up and get some kind of a run within those last couple laps. I, I think if Joey Logano doesn't have much damage to his car, and I don't think he does, I think he may be the, the wild card in the this X whole factor. thing. The X factor. Yeah, he may be the X factor. The other thing I was thinking about, Mike, the glare. Remember how we talked about the yep. glare? The, the lights are on now. It's dark. Maybe you don't have the right shield on. Maybe you had a dark shield on for the sun, and now you don't have a clear shield on for the lights. That could be a problem. All right, well, let's find out. What might be Kyle Busch's restart audio? A uh, restart to strategy, excuse me. We're going to go to audio. Do you think uh, we should stay on the bottom or stay on the, take the top and see if we get the lever to switch through and let us down or what? Uh, it would probably be best strength in numbers to have that happen, but it's inside 10 to go, and Boyer was pushing and pushing me pretty aggressively to not let the 11 down, so I don't know if, if that could work. Yeah, I think it's our best bet. If not, I think the Fords are going to try to split it. We shall see in just a lap or so here after an 18-car pileup with 10 to go. We'll be back to finish the Daytona 500. From the Harley Earl Trophy one year ago to the sledgehammer <laughs> tonight. Austin, that's Austin Dillon's night. 
Oh my gosh. Coming off the top row onto that hood. And boy, I can relate. I won three of these things, but I had the sledgehammer a whole lot more than that. All right, Kyle Busch, what does he do to win this race? Well, we see right here he chose the outside. They had talked about it on the radio. So he's going to, his best bet, get a big jump on Denny Hamlin, get down in front of him. But Clint Boyer is the last guy that wants to let that happen. He wants to split these Toyotas up. I, I see a little more damage on the uh, left rear of that 22 car than I thought he had. I don't know if that'll hurt him or not, but he's a guy to keep an eye on. Green, green, green. Perfectly executed. Nice yeah. start by the 18. Hey, don't Six count to go. that uh, 34 car out either. Michael McDowell, he's pretty good on these restrictor plate tracks. He's sitting in a pretty good spot. And he's got help. Joey Logano giving him a push. McDowell yeah, in the 34. Well, because Denny Hamlin laid back there a little bit to let his teammate get out in front of him, that opened up the door on the outside for the 34. And don't, don't look now, 22 at Joey Logano. I don't care if he has damage or not. Oh, oh, he's going to oh, turn the 30. Ooh. Oh, man, he almost turned the 34 McDowell. Great save by McDowell. Now, oh. here we go. They wrecked again. Larson and Stenhouse. You won't believe how Ryan Priest shot the gap and got through there. I can't believe it. <laughs> well, but you we'll know what I can believe? They wrecked again. I can't believe that. We'll have a great view of that, Mike, with that visor cam on Ryan Priest. There's your leader. Now There's the your second, is, third, fourth, fifth play. And that's this all is the, the guard question guard. now. Did Big Dow get ahead of the 11? Artie, don't you dare give me another shot of that full moon. I'm <laughs> over it. <laughs> oh, God. From the Goodyear blimp. We saw this. The last wreck that happened, the 22 and the 34 are bump drafting there. The 22 hooks them a little bit. Oh. But actually, the, this wreck ended up happening because the 17 of Stenhouse Dove to the middle. There really wasn't much of a hole there. Collects a 42 of Larson, the four, knocks yeah, the Kevin four. Harvey, Kevin Harvick, he goes up the, the hill, infield. hits the wall, and here comes the 13, gets into the two, spins him around. Holy spawn. I thought the truck race that night, they had six trucks or seven that were running at the finish. I thought, I'd never seen anything like that until now. Pfizer cam, Ryan Priest, this is the roof cam. Inside, Look inside. at this. Check up, check up, check up, check up, check up. Woo! <laughs> hey, that's some modified driving right there. <laughs> <laughs> now watch Stenhouse here. He sees a small, tiny gap that really wasn't there. Nope. Pushes the four of Kevin Harvick to the infield, turns around Kyle Larson. His buddy, by the way, Kyle Larson. I don't know. I don't think he got any buddies right now. Lordy, lordy. The blue car, Stenhouse. Bam, bam. Larson just get together. Oh, and oh, by the way, there's our pole sitter, William Byron, in the 24. He just drives right through it. Wow. Man. How did Amazing. he do that? He missed that I red. don't know. Don't count him out. That left oh. rear, they did a nice job fixing the left rear damage from that previous wreck. What did young William have to say? Hey, the thunder right there. Good gracious. We still got a chance, man. <laughs> good, right? I think so, yeah. Hey. Good I want to look at the back of that car. Oh, Days of thunder right there. It's Tom Cruise on line two. <laughs> lordy, lordy. I'm reminded of a day at Talladega when uh, Neil Bonnet was driving a second car for Richard Childress along with Dale Earnhardt. Got involved in a crash, walked back to the pit, and, and I asked him. I was doing the pits for CBS, and I said, Neil, you've raced against everybody out there. I said, who do you think is best positioned to win this race? He looks at me and he goes, pace car's got a good <laughs> shot at it. <laughs> I agree with that. What do we got now? Let's see. We got four laps to go now. And this, you know, this was such an exciting race. It was going along. It was a lot of different people leading to Benedetto and different ones at different times, Byron. And it was a great, exciting race. And then all of a sudden, Carnage broke loose. Cooking some hot dogs right there. <laughs> uh, overcooked right there. <laughs> Here's some uh, audio from Kyle Busch's team. Okay with the outside lane, but when I'm in the outside lane and something's happening on the bottom or underneath me, I can't see out of the left side mirror that quick. I cannot tell runs at all on my left. Like you got to tell me whether or not which one I got to be in front of. 
Yeah, typically that left side mirror it is rounded to, to give you more view out the left side and, and see further to the uh, to the infield to see when somebody's making a run, especially if you're in that outside lane. So he's just saying, I don't have a clear view of it, so I'm going to need your help uh, from the spotter. And he's just anticipating having to go from the yellow line to the wall to block whoever's going to come. We're going to ride with Kyle Larson. I don't want to ride with anybody. Jumped up in front of him the block, down half the lane, here comes 17. He's gonna split you here, he's gonna split you. Blocking it. Yeah. It's like an instant replay. Yeah, I think Ricky Craven said it best. You just don't lift. Inside 10 to go. Now we're getting to inside five to go. You don't lift. Chase Elliott. Again. I I under oh, man. I, I understand Ricky Stenhouse has a run. He has the momentum. He's saying, I've got this run. I've got the, uh, an opportunity here to make up some positions and get myself in position to win this Daytona 500. But sometimes you do have to lift. Still two wide, one back 13 with you. Still out there tight. Kevin Harvick, <laughs> he had, he had no clue what was coming. He's like, what just happened? Well, Chase Thanks. Elliott got through there, and he's currently listed in 12th place. If Chase can win the race, you can get 10 free boneless wings when you buy any 10 on Monday at Hooters or get free fried pickles if Chase finishes in the top 10. We're in a pickle right now. <laughs> There's that dark visor that you talked about. Yeah, I, I thought about that as the sun was setting. You know, I mean, uh, I guess he's he probably doesn't want to see what's in front of him. <laughs> probably just soon not. Coming around to two to go. Lights are out on the safety truck. Yeah, Boyer's yeah. all the way back to fifth. Yeah, that that sequence did not work out well for him. Not, and huh. Boyer is not happy about it. Now, now, this is very interesting. Now Kyle Busch chose the inside lane. He's like, I'm done with that. Because because the 11 before was on the inside, Vince. Yeah, and the reason he did that, uh, Jeff, they had conversation between the spotter Tony Hirschman and crew chief Adam Stevens, and it was all about who was in row two, who would be pushing Kyle, and then potentially who would he have to hold off to win the race. He didn't prefer to have um, Logano behind him uh, to have to beat Logano at the finish. He felt like Logano was cagey enough to do it, so he chose McDowell behind him. I always heard with five to go, it was every man for himself. I thought that was kind of team orders, but uh, it may have changed. Well, Adam Stevens told us that during that red flag. Two to go. Green flag. Kyle Busch. Here comes Hamlin on the outside. Oh, this makes me so nervous. Logano, he's coming. He's gonna. He's gonna definitely make a run at this thing. The last three Daytona 500s have been decided by a last lap pass. Now, I was gonna say I didn't see an advantage until that just happened right there. Now three wide, two rows back, three rows back. Oh, Boyer oh, gets turned. Golly. Looked to me like he came up just a little bit too early on McDowell. Oh my gosh. Oh. And William Byron's did luck runs out. Get through that one. What what memo did we not get? I mean, this this is crazy. Yeah. And the Joe Gibbs Toyotas lead them across the line. Might be, might be a we're, process of elimination here. We're going to NASCAR overtime as William Byron gets set to climb out. Chase Elliott comes around. We will have a green flag, a white flag, and hopefully a checker. It'll be a two lap shootout to finish the Daytona 500. Well, we're going to have the a cars checkered. remaining. Yeah, we're going to have a checkered flag. I just don't know when. Clint Boyer's radio. Okay, man. 
Yeah, I went for it. Sorry. There's Boyer. It did, it, great move right here. Side drafts the 34 of McDowell and 24. Gets them too wide. They stall out. Here's where he, look, he comes off that yellow line just a little bit too early. I don't know if the air on the right side brought him up or if he just decided to try to get up in front of him just a little bit too early in front of McDowell and the 34. Ooh, Ooh big, hit big hit right there. Double zero landing Close castle center. to the side door of William Byron. Well, Let's ride with Brian Priest because you won't believe this. Chapter two. Stay down, stay down. All right, you're good, you're good, you're good. Just stay. Now somebody's got some luck on his side or Chase Elliott. Three wide. Two wide. Oh, we're running again. Boy, that's such a run. Oh, William took two hard hits to the driver's side door. One from Clint Boyer, and then the next one later by Landon Castle. Kyle Larson's view. I love it. He's all, all the way down to second <laughs> gear. Garage. Oh, my Lord. I'd like to explain all this to you, but there really isn't an explanation for it. I just wish Boyer could Yikes. stay down on that yellow line. That was going to put him in such a great position. Jimmy Johnson in the 48. You know, Boyer was not a happy camper Wait. about where he had to restart. And, right. uh, of course, he was trying to get back to where he was. He was running third. He almost made it. Now, to establish that restart order, NASCAR freezes the field on the caution, goes back to the last scoring loop where everyone was running prior to the moment of caution. That's how they reset the order. The 20, Eric Jones Ooh, shoots boy, through. He did just thread the needle there. Barely made it through. Let's ride along. <laughs> oh man, the gates just parted. I mean, everything opened up. He went right through. How about this? Eric Jones right now showed in 20th position. Uh, I'm not sure what issue they had earlier. We talked about no fuel pressure, but hey, he's still in it. Well, uh, yeah, Eric's in seventh spot. Is that right? Yes. That's that's where they have him scored currently. Lord. The last three Daytona 500s, let's review the last lap of each one. 2016, Martin Truex inside Denny Hamlin. Trade the lead three times on the way to the finish line. Hamlin, the winner. 2017, last lap pass. Kirk Busch as Kyle Larson runs out of fuel. And here is Austin Dillon putting the bumper to Eric Almarola one year ago. As I said in the pre-race, you wave that white flag, toss the rule book out the window, you do what you got to do. You know what they all had in common? They led one lap, the last one. Now, as we go into, is this our second overtime? Uh, I got a question for Larry. Larry, you know, they came in for fuel. 163 was the last time they were on pit road. How are these guys on fuel? Yep, Jeff. I, I mean, obviously they pitted with 37 to go in, in regulation laps, but we have had, and I, I've run out of paper, but we've run over 20 caution laps, and you know how much fuel they save, so I think everybody should be in good shape considering the number of caution laps we've run. Yeah, I'm probably right there, Larry. And I'll ask you one more question. What about the 11, though? They had that fueling issue earlier. Do we know if they've resolved that? Is he getting it full of fuel? Well, we've been looking at different shots, and it, it, it appears, yeah, earlier in the race, mid part of the race, they definitely were having some issues, as I think Regan Smith reported. But the last few times we've looked, we did not see any problem with them getting fuel in that car, Jeff. Thursday night, Joey Logano pulled the move of moves from fourth place. 
He said he thought about it for 30 laps to plan exactly where and how he would win that race. Oh, it was textbook. I mean, he gets a little side draft right here off his team, off of uh, the 10 car. That, and then he just shoots to the bottom. The 12 gives him a shove. That little shove gave him the momentum he needed to come up in front of Clint Boyer, and they couldn't catch him. Now, I don't know if that'll work tonight, but it might. Well, the, the difference, they were single file then, and he had all this time to plan and think about it because as that race was unfolding, it didn't look like there was any cautions coming. Now that we have these side-by-side -side restarts, I just don't think that he can plan it out quite that well. It doesn't have, we don't have the patience to be able to do that. That push is going to have to come from behind, though. Yeah, he's got a little bit of a bumper shoot right there on the left rear, so that's going to hurt him, too. Jeff, why did he make that move exactly where on the track he made it? I love that area to make a move, and I'll tell you why, Mike. As you come into the trioval, the driver in front of you is ha he, he's looking in front of him, he's looking in his mirror, looking in front of him, looking in his mirror. But as you come off of that trioval, you have to present your, uh, prevent yourself from getting into the wall. So your eyes typically gravitate forward as you unwind the steering wheel. That's when you pounce, you make that move because they're not looking in their mirror. And it looked like that's exactly what happened with Eric Almarola in front of Joey. But, but it was almost like, oh, I didn't see that coming. It was a, like a surprise. I mean, all of a sudden, Logano was jumping out, and here he comes, and well, I that, didn't see it coming. But that all materialized all the way back in turn four because Joey Logano's teammate, Ryan Blaney, got on that rear bumper, gave him a nice push and shove down the front straightaway to build that momentum and that extra speed as they entered the trial Cars are being pushed back to the garage area. Chase Elliott's and Clint Boyer's. There's Brendan Gaughan's being hauled back to the garage. Yesterday was the race when no one wanted to pull out and pass. Tonight is the race when no one seems to be able to find the finish line. And here are some of the reasons why. Kurt Busch, the 43 of Bubba Wallace, the 40 of Jamie McMurray with damage. This is coming on pit road for heaven's sake. Then Kyle Larson gets up and goes around. Brad Keselowski Left with a cut tire. And then Matt DiBenedetto gets turned by Paul Menard and 18 cars pile in. And Mike, I know that doesn't look like they're just kind of bouncing off either, but you get the heck jarred out of you and you're in these kind of wrecks. And then with two to go, Clint Boyer drops low on Michael McDowell, comes up, contact into William Byron and Chase Elliott. And one thing that went out of our screen there when this was all happening behind them was Denny Hamlin with the lead. You think Kyle Busch is regretting that decision to go to the inside on that restart. So here's Kyle Busch on the inside. Said, it's too late in the race for us to be playing those games on the restart to try to get nose to tail. I'm just going to go for it. Boyer sitting in fifth in the 14. Knows he's got to make something happen, and the time is now. There's a lap and a half to go. He does a nice job here recognizing that the 22 and the 34, get they just get a little bit drugged down, stalled out. Boy, he just pulls out and goes right by him, almost like McDowell had an issue. I mean, that, that 11 is just barely ahead of the 18, but he is, he is ahead. By two feet, Denny Hamlin was in front of Kyle Busch might, as they check the scoring from the moment of caution. And that might be just all Denny Hamlin needed to win this race. And think about what an emotional win that's going to be for Coach Gibbs. The 11 car wins this race. That would be incredible. We are two laps from finishing the Daytona 500. Red flag is out. Cleanup being finished up tonight on Fox. Bob Spurgers is next, except on the West Coast. 8 o'clock, the Simpsons. 8.30, Bob's Burgers. And then a double dose of Family Guy at 9 and 9.30. Hey, Mike, what time did you and I do that hit this morning? With uh, Fox and Friends? With Fox and Friends, about 7.25. 7.30, wasn't it? Yeah, what about, time is it? <laughs> 12 hours ago. <laughs> Been a 12-hour day. But look at the grandstand. Oh, nobody, Everybody's uh, still here. Nope. Haven't waiting left. to settle this one out. Coach Gibbs with his two cars out front and a crowd of 100,000 waiting to see who will finally drive in, walk in, get pushed into victory lane <laughs> to hoist the Harley Earl Trophy.
Saturday races at Atlanta on FS1, Las Vegas on Fox, and Phoenix on FS1 the next three weeks in a row with the Cup Series to follow on Sunday. Oh, Arnie. <laughs> no, please, please. It is full moon Sunday night. <laughs> oh, no. And we all grew up racing short tracks. And, on, and, and full moon on Saturday night meant carnage and crashes and uh, a lot of work during the week repairing those cars. And it is no different tonight. But as I look at the cars that are left, it is going to be a Noah's Ark restart. <laughs> two Toyotas on the front row, two Fords right behind them, two Chevrolets right behind them. What happens next? Well, I think the 11 is going to win this race. So he got himself in a position. I think that little bit of a lead he had down the back is just what he needed to win this race. But Michael McDowell, who's having a heck of a run, could be the spoiler in this whole thing. But, Mike, I've been all warmed up for a, for a finish, and I had to wait. So then I got all warmed up for a finish, and then I had to wait. <laughs> so maybe don't, we'll have a finish this don't time. Don't get warmed up this time. <laughs> I don't know, Jeff. I can't pick a winner out of this. Kyle Busch is very, very strong. So is Denny Hamlin. They both know how to win here. Uh, Hamlin's a former champion of the Daytona 500. Joey Logano's had the fastest car all week. I wonder what the odds on Ryan Priest were. <laughs> there he sits in fifth place. It's still anybody's race. It really is. I mean, I look at Denny Hamlin right now. He's going to probably take that, that inside position like his teammate Kyle Busch did before, and he has Joey Logano on his bumper. That's going to be a good pusher to try to get out and get that lead. But I don't know if I want Joey Logano on my rear bumper in the closing laps. We've seen what he's been up to do. Don't you think Joey will be pushing a little harder than Michael McDowell? Yes, no, maybe? I, I, I think Joey is very confident on these types of tracks and is more aggressive. Yes. Michael McDowell's done a phenomenal job getting himself into this position, and I think he's going to have a great finish. I just don't know if he's going to push as aggressively as Logano. But one of, one of the things I noticed on Logano's car, Mike, he has got a big bulge in that left rear quarter panel. I think he could be a good pusher, but I don't know what would happen if he tried to pull out and the air got captured in that wheel well like that. That could really slow him down. Well, let's go back to Denny Hamlin's Daytona 500 victory three years ago. There's that push we always talk about. He had a huge bump draft from behind by Kevin Harvick. That's what gave him this run to get three wide with his teammate Matt Kenseth, as well as Mark Truex Jr. to come to the wire. Yeah, we thought Truex had won this race. I mean, we were saying Truex, 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 and then look, at the last second, Denny Hamlin. Turned out the lead changed hands three times in that final 1,600 feet. And the Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota driver from Chesterfield, Virginia, Denny Hamlin, who grew up in the grandstands at Richmond Fairgrounds Raceway, hoping for a chance to someday race here. And seven-year-old Denny Hamlin wrote a letter to himself saying, I want to win the 500 at Daytona. He specified the year, the paint job, and who his crew would be. And his dream came true at least once so far. Matt? Mike, the landscape certainly has changed for Joey Legato. Now, instead of a, a whole host of Fords around him, now it's a mixed bag of manufacturers. So has TJ been able to kind of get an idea of the damaged cars or the severity of the damage around that might help Joey? Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty thin out there on, on quality cars at this point. No damage. So um, we got a little bit, but we're, we're in pretty good shape. I had pretty good speed coming to that one. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what Joey can do with this uh, green-white checker. Thanks, Todd. Toyotas, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch. Fords, Joey Logano, uh, Logano, the 22, the 34, Michael McDowell. You're on board with the Chevrolet of Ryan Priest, And next to him, Ty Dillon. There's that damage you talked about, Yeah, Darryl. just below that uh, pins oil sign right there. That uh, quarter panel is bulging out pretty far. Um, I don't know if that'll hurt him or not. I know it'll hurt him a little bit. I think they're in such a, a tight draft. And everybody's pushing so much, I don't think it's going to have any effect on Joey Logano's ability of whether he has speed to get by one of these Toyotas. New crew chief for Denny Hamlin for this 500, Regan. Well, Chris Gabehart, it's been an eventful day for you. You had the fuel problems earlier. You resolved those a couple of pit stops ago. How are your nerves right now, and do you have enough fuel to get to the end here? Honestly, same as I told you before, my nerves really aren't that bad. I mean, you got... A group as talented as these guys around you and Denny Hamlin at a speedway race, really any race, but a speedway race on the front row at, at these speedway races multiple times over the last few years. There's a reason why it's either going to work out or it's not, but uh, I feel pretty good about FedEx Toyota Camry right now. All right, good luck. Thanks, Chris. 
Calm, cool, and collected. <laughs> That's a cool guy right there. No, it'll, it'll do whatever whatever happens, happens. Well, yeah, he's done his job. He's like, Denny, I put you in position to win the Daytona 500. The rest is up to you. <laughs> Denny Hamlin is your race leader, the 2016 winner. Kyle Busch in second, the number 18 Toyota. Joey Logano third, the number 22 Ford. On the outside of the second row is the number 34 Ford in yellow, Michael McDowell. As we walk it back, row number three, rookie Ryan Priest for JTG Doherty Racing in the 47. Alongside him, Ty Dillon, whose brother won this race last year, in the number 13 Chevrolet. Eric Jones in his number 20 Toyota. Kyle Larson, despite bringing out that caution and the damage, he is eighth in a Chevy. Alex Bowman's number 88 Chevrolet is the ninth place car. Jimmy Johnson in the number 48. We saw all the problems Johnson's had this week, including getting the left rear of his car ripped off on the entrance to pit road by a spinning car. Jimmy is 10th. And right behind him is, I think, the feel good story of the day. Ross Chastain from Florida. Watermelon man, they call him. He's in that business. He had a ride lined up in the Xfinity Series for the whole season. It was his dream. He was on top of the world until his sponsor had problems with the government, filed bankruptcy, and the team shut down. He lost that ride. He picked up this ride for the 500, and there's Ross Chastain in 11th place. Look at It's in pristine condition. Ross <laughs> Chastain has done one heck of a job today. Keep it going, buddy. <laughs> Hey, hey, guys, this thing ain't over with <laughs> I know. That's why I said keep it going. <laughs> just, make, just make a couple of laps here. <laughs> now, also on the lead lap, the Fords of Ricky Stenhouse, Ryan Newman, and Brad Keselowski, all with damage. Two laps down, Parker Kligerman and Austin Dillon. Seven laps down, Corey LaJoy and B.J. McLeod. Those are the cars running. And as soon as uh, the speedy dry is blown off the track, we'll be ready to restart. And that first start, with two to go was in regulation time. So okay. going back to NASCAR overtime and the rules are this. They'll wave the green flag if and it's a big if tonight <laughs> if the leader makes it around and takes the white flag while the track is under green the next flag ends the race caution or checker. Oh. If the leader does not make it to the white flag under green we'll try again. I got my I got my fingers crossed. Saying a prayer. That'll do it. That ought to work. <laughs> Time to pick a winner in the 61st Daytona 500.
The cars are rolling to finish the Daytona 500. 61st running, Lee Petty won the first one. Took three days to decide the finish between he and Johnny Beauchamp. Richard Petty's won it seven times. Dave Marcus has tried 33 times. Bobby Allison, the oldest. Trevor Bain, the youngest, to go to victory lane. Two United States presidents have been grand marshals. And eight Pro Football Hall of Fame members have been honorary starters. Julian Edelman, you want to add him to that list? Probably. And it was invented at Tiger Stadium in the mid-1980s. The Wave makes a reappearance at Daytona. Everybody getting ready for this restart. What will Denny Hamlin do? <laughs> Adam suggesting that we do the teammate restart, us choose top. He'll let us down to try and keep that 22 pin behind both of us in third. And that'll have the 34 with the 13 pushing him up top. I'm good with it. He's just going to be you know, true to it that he's going to let me in. I, I agree with the move. But on the last restart, that's not the way Kyle Busch was feeling about it. I don't know if he was trusting that Denny Hamlin was going to hold true to it. I heard one side of that story, but I never did hear the other side of that story. I didn't hear the other guy say, yeah, I'm OK with that. And the big difference there is Denny Hamlin's won the Daytona 500. Kyle Busch does not want to be Dale Earnhardt 0 for 19 going for 20, still trying to win it. He wants it now. I don't know well, if I it, was either one of those guys, I'd just be happy to still be rolling. <laughs> it, I mean, if I'm Joe Gibbs, I would want to get in the middle of this because I think it's the best chance for his organization to win the Daytona 500 is to have them nose to tail, not side by side. Most of the time, Coach is a pretty good listener. He just listens to what's going on. Joe Gibbs, Rick Hendrick, Roger Penske, these multi-team owners usually do not get involved when their drivers are racing for the win. No, they That's leave it true. up to the crew chiefs. That's what they usually do. And Jeff, Darrell, you've both been part of multi-car teams. You know there's no one you'd rather beat than your teammate because you know he has exactly the same opportunity and equipment that you do. Yeah, we, we had one rule. Just don't wreck your teammate. That's right. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're great to have in a race like this where you can work together and keep yourself out of trouble, keep yourself up front, give yourself a chance to win. But what I say, yourself. <laughs> so at the end, it comes down to yourself. We Larry to Mack, is that uh, notebook of trims all burn up, spontaneous combust tonight? Well, yeah, I've already put it away for the night. But but just going back to teammates, I know working for Richard Childress Racing for four years with two car teams up there, he had two house rules. To your point, don't wreck your teammate, but do not help someone else beat your teammate. That was the two house rules. Other than that, he said race each other as hard as you want. I think most of the rules, if there is a rule, if there was a golden rule, five laps to go, it's every man for himself. Don't wreck your teammate but every man for himself. But fellas, there's only two cars of each make in the first three rows, and there are three lanes of racetrack. <laughs> and there's not enough, there's not a lot of laps to go. <laughs> well, and we just saw what a great run Clint Boyer got on two cars that were side by side when they got stalled out, the 34 McDowell um, alongside, I believe, Logano. Boyer had a great run, so there's no reason why that couldn't also happen if those front row guys get side by side or the two Toyotas get side by side and stall one another out. That sound of silence is Ryan Priest saving Sunoco Race Fuel. Well, you don't know how many more of these we could get into into these green white checkers. I never saw a guy juke around in a car like he does, except Rusty Wallace. He reminds me so much of Rusty in the car, moving his head, snapping his wrist. The first 14 cars down to Ryan Newman are on the lead lap. One of them will win the Daytona 500. Two laps to go. Green next time by. All right, Joey Logano radio and then Ty Dillon. 
Yeah, the 13 is trying to get to us too, because he said if we go right into the parking lot, he's going with us. 10 <laughs> 4, good to know. Joey looked in the mirror and said, Oh, 13, he's still with us. Looking for any help they can possibly find out. Your there. friends are where you find them. That's right. And sometimes it's the one you least expect in the closing laps of this race. Uh, yeah. Stephen Stills, love the one you're with. Yeah. That's right. No, help me help you. That's uh, kind of a good rule. Well, unfortunately, right now for Joey Logano, the 13 of Ty Dillon is in the outside lane. So I'm just not so sure he can get there. His best friend right now is the guy we've been talking about with our visor camera. Uh, Ryan Priest. When that 22, when he made all of his good moves, they were on the outside. I mean, he passed a lot of cars on the outside. Joey Logano racing against former teammates at Joe Gibbs Racing on the front row. Two Toyotas, two Fords, two Chevrolets, and then eight more lead lap cars to settle this. Now, see, that, two, that's two. What I say is the real motivator here is for Joey Logano, knowing he got his break at Joe Gibbs Racing, now he's at Penske. He would love to spoil this day for them. Yeah. Two laps to go. Everybody on their feet. It's time for overtime, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Here we go. Try it again. Green flag. That worked. Yeah, we talked about that. That worked that for move. Oh, we did it work too well. Is Denny too far out in front? Well, that outside lane is not organized as well as the inside lane, so I think it is going to work. Here comes Joey Logano with that big push to the rear bumper of the 18. Watch the run that Kyle Busch is going to get on his teammate. Logano needs some help. he got to have somebody up there push him a little bit to get him by these guys or get him up to him. Bush stays in line. Here comes help big from Priest. Priest. You know 22 to Logano. If he can get there, he'll do it. I just don't think that they're, I think that Kyle Busch was not quite ready and in position. He had a big enough push to try to make a move on his teammate, Denny Hamlin. He's going to wait till this final lap. Yeah, I think Priest wanted to help Joey, but he just, he's not quite as fast as Joey. Can't keep hooked up. One lap to go. Two Connecticut Yankees chasing Hamlin and Bush. Wow, what a move by Logano. He got wow, under, he got that under was Kyle amazing. Bush. And right. Priest is coming to help. All right, and that's what he's going to need. He's got to back up to Priest. He's not going to be able to do it on his own. He's got to get that push from Priest. He's going to have to get on the brakes here, but he's got Kyle Bush in the outside lane. Logano and Priest grew up together at the quarter midget tracks Watch. in Connecticut. And Logano looks low. Oh, top Kyle lane gets Bush filled. It's Kyle. Logano. Kyle Bush in the top lane. Logano on the bottom, McDowell, the second yellow car. Where will he go? I so go. interesting uh. that McDowell decided to go with Kyle Busch, but here comes Eric Jones on the inside. Denny Hamlin. Hamlin what, off turn number out? four. No, side-by-side -side battle to the finish this time. Denny Hamlin wins his second Daytona 500 and wins it for Coach Gibbs in Toyota. In the 11 yeah. car. Wow. Yeah. What a day for J.D. Gibbs, for Joe Gibbs, for that whole team. Boy, that's storybook man. stuff right there. That was meant to be. So get in again, my friend. Nice work. Awesome job, Chris. Team, I'm really proud of you guys. It's going to be a great year. Yeah, i got to talk to my driver right now. The same time for both of you. Let me go, Denny Hamlin. Golly, it's such a pleasure to work with these guys. Thank you very much. That's the motion. I'm trying not to do it all week, but here we are. They call it 510. Thank you. The Joe Gibbs Toyotas finish one, two, three. Like I said, I think it was just meant to be. The Jones boy, where'd he come from? Vince. Well, coach, we were talking a few moments ago and you said, you said, just as long as, long as one of them yeah. won, you finished one, two, three. Can't get much better than that. Yeah, man, I got to tell you, I'm, uh, what happened right here? JD's name is on that car. That's his number 11 with Denny. He found Denny. I'm just saying what happened here is emotional for all of us, the family. This is, this is Jackson. Denny's, Denny racing like he did right there is just unbelievable. I, I'm emotionally shot. This is What's Jackson, it mean, Joe, that grandkids here. I'm just saying what happened here is really unreal. And uh, I'm just thrilled. I think J JD had the best 
best view of everything. It was really an unbelievable experience. I don't know how to put it in any other words. I just thank the Lord for letting us be a part of this. Yeah. And I, I hope JD, I hope people will go to JD Gibbs Legacy.com and see that video. I think it could be life changing for him. Congratulations, yes, Joe. Coach Gibbs talking about his eldest son, JD, who died last month from a neurological disease. Team president and co founder with his dad. He recruited Denny Hamlin. Sunoco fueling victories all season long, fueling Denny Hamlin to this Daytona 500 win. Hey, Mike, he didn't win a race last year. But he's already won the first race this year. First time one team has finished 1-2-3 since 1997 when Jeff Gordon won the 500. And there's Denny pointing to the J.D. Gibbs sticker along with the wood chopper, Glenn Wood, the Hall of Famer who recently <laughs> passed. Denny say, I'm going to drive back to Victory Lane. No, you're not. To. You got it parked perfectly. Jamie Little. Denny, all of these fans have stood here for a long time waiting to see this moment, but you just pointed at that sticker. Yeah. What does J.D. Gibbs mean to you uh, in this event? The whole family, they just, uh, they, they've done so much for me uh, over the course of my career. It's just, uh, this one's for J.D. We, we, we're desperately going to miss him uh, the rest of our lives, but uh, his legacy still lives on with through Joe Gibbs Racing and uh, proud to do this for them. Once again, a brand new crew chief here at Daytona and Chris Gabehart. You guys worked together in the Xfinity Series back in the day. What was it about him that you knew and you believed that you guys could do this and get you back to winning? Uh, he's a short track racer. I, that's what I love about him is he's just got that short track mentality. Uh, same as wheels and uh, wheels car ran pretty damn good day to do too. So it's uh, just amazing to be in this position. Thank FedEx, Toyota, all these partners. Uh, Coca-Cola, the Jordan brand, uh, Monster Energy, everyone who uh, put this car on the racetrack. This is amazing. I don't want to tear this one up because I want to put it back in my house. Denny, not a lot of people get a chance to do it a second time. And you always think, if I had that chance again, what would you do differently? What's going to be different about this celebration? I don't know. I'm just going to enjoy it more. I mean, I, I think I was so dumbfounded about everything that happened in the first time with the photo finish and everything. I, this one lets me soak it in a little bit more. I'm going to have a terrible hangover tomorrow, but I'm going to enjoy it the rest of my life. How about party with the fans? Love it. Denny Hamlin wins the Daytona 500. Note that decal for J.D. Gibbs on the A post. Checkered flag and the cross. A very religious young man. Sorely missed. Family here. And what a legacy he leaves, including this Daytona 500 victory. Not exactly a storybook finish for most of the week, a field, but you couldn't script this. Denny Hamlin wins the 500.
This aerial view of Victory Lane provided by Goodyear. Those who live up to their names make one for themselves. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. For the second time in four years, Denny Hamlin is in victory lane at the biggest stock car race in the world. We're, uh, fitting him with, looks like a lavalier microphone so he can talk to us up here in the booth. After his second Daytona 500 triumph. Chris Gabehart coming into the picture to congratulate him. Brand new crew chief. And there's a couple of earpieces in. All right. Denny, last year, what do you have to say right this minute to all the Denny doubters that last year said, well, he didn't win a race, he's not going to win a race, and here you are. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. I, I told him over the radio, I've been in this position so many times, I can't believe how many times I've been on the front row on the last restart for the Daytona 500, and I deem myself one for four in those situations, but I guess now I'm two for five. So amazing job by this whole FedEx team. Got to thank uh, Toyota, everyone that helped uh, put this race car on the racetrack, uh, Coca-Cola, the Jordan brand, Michael Jordan's birthdays today is pretty amazing. Uh, everyone at the Little Big Burger as well. So just a, a great day overall for our race team. We got, we got a rookie team here for me. Uh, a lot of these guys are brand new, and some of them are still here on this team, but uh, to have all these FedEx executives here, uh, just a, this just the greatest day. Yeah, it did. He's TW. I, this, the emotion. I mean, I know how emotional I was for Joe Gibbs and for JD and 11 and and your family. You were going to donate 111 dollars for every lap you lead and and your and, and your family's there and your new <laughs> team, your crew, your crew chief. What an incredible, what an incredible uh, a win that it was for you. Yeah, it's just I mean the rebranding of the car as well to to bring back the white and the FedEx. It's just a. Uh, it's just one of those days where it just felt like I was meant to be, honestly. Uh, our, our car was really good. We got a little mixed up there in the middle of the race where we had to couldn't get the fuel in the car. But other than that, I mean, we, we ran up front all day and put ourselves in great position and uh, just capitalized at the end. And, you know, hats off to Kyle as well. I know he was eagerly wanting his first victory here in the Daytona 500, but, uh, you know, today we just weren't going to be denied. Hey, Denny, this is Jeff. I want to go back to this last couple of restarts. You talked about your teammate Kyle Busch. You guys had a conversation uh, there with Chris Gabehart, your new, new crew chief, about what to do on that last restart. You saw where Kyle Busch chose the inside the time before, and you got the lead because of that. This time, you had to make a decision, try to figure out how to get in front of him. <laughs> I, I was where, I, when he gave me the top, I, I literally was doing a little cheer in my mind, thinking my playbook said, always choose the top, no matter what, no matter who's behind you, uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, I, that's why I'm saying I've been on the final front row so many restarts and lost it because I've been on the bottom and I just felt like when, when we got the opportunity to jump up there um, you know obviously there were circumstances that happened behind us that allowed us to be up front at the caution but felt pretty good about being on the top line there and then obviously we thought it was best idea for us uh, you know he asked about me pulling down in front of him on the final restart uh, and I was good with that because I thought that uh, between him and the 22 those were going to be the two best pushers and it, and it worked out well for us. Well, thank you, Denny. Go celebrate. Congrats. I will. <laughs> I'm going to hate tomorrow, but I'm going to love the rest of my life. I can tell you that. Right. Enjoy every second. Uh, thank you. Kyle Busch, his teammate, finishes second. He's with Vince Welch. Kyle Busch has won everything at Daytona except the 500, and you were right there. You made a deal with your teammate, Denny Hamlin, for that last restart. Was that the difference? Would you do it a different second time around? Um, I don't know. Strengths in numbers. You know, we're trying to at least protect one of our cars being able to get to victory lane, and I felt like we were able to do that with uh, with being able to, to do what we did on that last restart. But overall, it's, um, you know, certainly bittersweet. You know, it's awesome to see a JGR car in victory lane for Joe and JD and everything that's kind of gone on this offseason with all of that. 
um, but it's very, very bittersweet for everybody at M&M's and Interstate Batteries and um, Skittles and Snickers and all those that support us and all my team guys that work so hard to try to get to victory lane for us and, and trying to get our, our Daytona 500 victory. You know, he's got two, I got none, but uh, that's a part of it sometimes, and, and we just have to move on and go to next time. You seemed apprehensive to go along with that plan when it was presented to you. In hindsight, do you wish you'd have just raced it out like you had the time before? Uh, yes and no. I mean, again, uh, trying to make sure at least one of us got to victory lane is first and foremost. and. Um, you know, after that, you try to go race it out and see what you can do for yourself and for your team. But, um, you know, there, there wasn't enough cars out there, really. I mean, there were six cars running at the end. I don't know that anything would have been any different, really, if anything would have materialized. I think we all would have just been stuck side by side, given if I would have been on the outside or something like that. So it's, it's so hard to tell. I, I don't know how it would have played out, but I'm not going to worry about it. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you, Vince. Another bit of irony. When Denny Hamlin at age seven wrote that letter saying he wanted to win the Daytona 500, he wanted to win it on February 17th. Today is February 17th for Denny Hamlin. That's a winning performance. Congratulations to Coca-Cola Racing family. Driver Denny Hamlin for his second Daytona 500 win. Joey Logano won Thursday night, was the favorite going into today. And Logano is the first four to cross the line in fourth. Here's Matt Yoakum. Well, for Joey Logano, I don't even know where to begin to describe that final push. I thought at one point when you dove to the inside that you were in the right position to make that move. What happened? Yeah, I, I tried. You know, it was super cool. I had Ryan Priest behind me, and we grew up racing quarter midgets, and quarter midgets at Silver City Quarter Midget Club in Meridian, Connecticut. And to be racing against each other in a Daytona 500, that's probably the coolest thing to have him pushing me behind there. And, Man, it had been so neat to get the win. Um, he gave me the push I needed to get by the 18. I just I needed one more shove there uh, to be able to, to get to the, the 11. I just didn't have quite enough to get underneath the 11. But, um, you know, proud of the, the effort and the momentum that this uh, 
Mustang's really showing with this with Shell Pennzoil team, so um, I'm, I'm proud of that. We can uh, we scored a lot of points this week while we we're down here, so um, it's it's not about points in Daytona though. I, I, I say it all the time. It's about doing the burnout the that Denny's doing behind me right now and, and winning this thing. So congratulations to them. They uh, they kept their cars in one piece <laughs> and, uh, and and they worked together well. So um, yeah, we just we got beat, but uh, still proud of uh, the speed we had in our race car. Thanks, Joey. Fourth place finish tonight in the 500. Thanks, Matt. Well, we talked about that Noah's Ark restart. The finish: three Toyotas, followed by two Fords, followed by five Chevrolets as Denny Hamlin hoists the Harley Earl Trophy. More after this. Hope you've enjoyed our new studio. There are the Joe Gibbs Toyotas that finished one, two, three in the first sweep of a Daytona 500 in a couple of decades. Denny Hamlin, winner of his second Daytona 500. A big hug shared with Coach Joe Gibbs. He's an expert of winning. Wow, what a night. What a race. Tonight on Fox, except on the West Coast, the Simpsons are next, then Bob's Burgers, and a double hit of Family Guy at 9 and 9.30. Next Sunday, we'll see you in Atlanta, the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500, 1.30 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Coverage begins with FS1 and race day at 12.30 Eastern time. And don't forget, NASCAR Race Hub on FS1, weeknights at 6 Eastern, we'll break it all down for you. Denny Hamlin, a double winner of the Daytona 500. Thanks for joining us. See you in Atlanta next Sunday. Story from stuff right there.
This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.